I didn't realize, and this is really dark, there's church prostitutes. Oh, for sure. That get passed around pastors. Absolutely. I think you're opening up yourself to some serious demonic activity. There is a Christian version of the Illuminati. Sexual perversion is pervasive for a reason. And it's not just in this country, but there's a country I've been invited to several times. I'm not going. Hmm. Part of the honorarium is... Please don't push me, but y'all push B. Now we got dwellers from Cali to flat bush B. Now they got heat on they feet that say press B. And now we so deep in the streets, y'all can't stress me. Can't curse me, then bless me. I'm crucifying my flesh, that's less me. SAT from preaching, can't test me. Atheists are now believing, that bless me. Yeah, we got the basement replacing any of those worldly pursuits that y'all chasing. Any of those trials and tests that y'all facing Any of the relationships that y'all changing We rearranging, making the shame shift Giving Satan back what's his, that's the blame shift Rise up and walk commands, that's the lame shift Cheat codes for living this life, that's the game shift All on Yeshua man, the rest is manure man I'm dying daily so I rise up a purer man Press and be daily so my sins looking fewer man Washing the blood so my sins down the sewer man yeah, so press B with me And let's let whatever gon' be just be uh, Yeah, so press B with me And let's let whatever gon' be just be Welcome to the basement, ladies and gentlemen I am your host, Tim Ross I hope you're all doing well Shout out to all of my dwellers all over the world I love you guys so much Wherever you might be right now Thank you for making vulnerability your normalization. Thank you for pressing B with me and let's let whatever going to be just be. Uh, to all the people that have literally pressed B and downloaded that B-Side app, thank you so much for supporting this platform. We intend to get you right from the inside out. And so thank you for going on the journey. Thank you for being brave enough to do your soul work so that you can be an integrated person and live the rest of your life uh, with the peace that passes all understanding. Hey, listen. My homie came back. <laughs> my homie came back. But this time he pulled up to the crib. The last time we 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 connected that you came on the show was two years ago. Mm -hmm. And we were at a studio in Grapevine. Mm -hmm. And um, we went on a little bit of a tour uh, with like spaces, even in our house. But we kind of landed upstairs mm -hmm. and people come and they're like, oh my God, you're, you don't have a basement. And I'm like, the soil moves in Texas. We can't have a basement. I would love to they have a basement. They literally thought you're always in a basement. Yeah. They, they, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's- You it's, didn't read the book. Yeah, you, and you didn't watch the pod. And you like, didn't watch you, the pod. You didn't watch the pod. You did not watch episode one, season one. It just didn't happen. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, if you don't know who this man is, he, he, you're one of the few people that is blessed to just have your first name spoken and everybody knows who it is. Oh, wow. Like, I don't have that. Like, if you say Tim, they'll be like, Tim who? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? If somebody said Chris, they'll be like, Chris who? But like Ruslan, there's not like, which Ruslan? Yeah. It's, 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 wow. it's a unique that's, name. That's a very good point. Yeah, yeah like, about it. yeah, like you're the, you're the only person I know. I mean, Lecrae, nobody else is a Lecrae yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. But like, Carl don't have that. What's up, everybody? This is Hector, producer of The Basement Show. And this conversation is wild. You're absolutely going to love it. And it's amazing. But if you haven't already, go and download the B-Side app. When you download it, there's already some free content on there you can enjoy. But to actually join our community and get access to every exclusive piece we have and all of our future live shows first, you got to subscribe. So go download it and subscribe today. We have a family plan available so you can get everyone in your household to have it on their phone or their device. We just want you to have it and we love you. And this is a community app. We're all growing together and we're living together. Well, not physically, but we do life together. And I just want you to know we're walking with you and we have a safe space for you to walk with us. So we love you and enjoy the rest of this episode. Peace. You know what I mean? They'll be like Winslow <laughs> family matters. Um, so, uh, yeah. So if y'all don't, 
Follow him already. You should. If you aren't into Bless God Studios, you should be. Um, this guy uh, loves Jesus. He loves his wife and his kids. He loves the local church. Um, he is a creative savant. And um, we're just vibing in my house. So uh, I would like to introduce to the eight people that don't know and present back to some others. Ruslan is back in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go! Wow. Let's wow. go. What an instruction. Well, let me, first of all, let me say this. These couches are extremely comfortable. I'm glad. I keep wanting to do this. You can. But I just feel like that would be a weird body frame to have this, you know, body language. I don't know. No. It's, it's, it's all a psychoanalyze. It just, it just means like you're, I'm relaxed. you're really relaxed. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Thank you for opening up your home, man. Your for sure. Beautiful home. I got to meet your beautiful wife. That's right. Super cool. Um, so I, I wanted to say this. Yeah. When we had that first pod, I wasn't podcasting at the time. So I did a podcast all of 2019. Yep. Every day putting up clips in, and then I pivoted hard into live streaming and YouTube. Yep. And I'd have like a guest here and there, but I wasn't having podcast conversations. Oh, and I it didn't was know that. Your podcast that got feedback from my audience that were like, "We love you in this long form." Yep. And just your ability to not not directly but indirectly help me see something bigger and different and broader. I don't think I knew that. Yeah. 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 So like you, that moment was really helpful for me in, wow. in many ways than one. So yeah. I want to say that. And, and with that, I brought you gifts. I already gave your team gifts. So this is our leadership planner. I gave you the prayer journal a long time ago. You did? But I brought something even even more special. Okay. So you then, can open that one. This. You can you get the headphones up just a smidge? And what they, you went from real loud to real quiet. Um, there we go. That's, that's beautiful. So that's a leadership planner. I love um, it. 12 months of calendar that's evergreen with our prayer journal inside of it. A nice. leadership journal section in the notes. I love oh, that Oh, you thing. doubled down on this. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, and it's notched. Like it has, I want to tear the paper. You can, I, you can take it apart if yeah, you want. Yeah, I, I want to. Yeah, I really I'm like that, that guy. thing. Um, so thank the, you. there's a reason for me giving you this and what I give you now. Next will be pretty fun. Okay. Yeah, this is, oh, yes. Little pen holder action. Yes. I'm that type of nerd. I'm this nerdy. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like a, a lot. Pretty, pretty cool little uh leadership div, leadership journal, like problem solving framework we use. But what I really wanted to present to you, okay, and no one has this. Like my pastor doesn't have this. <laughs> what you about the, to give the, me? The the I think I think we have we have two at the house. Okay. Okay. Um, and now this the, the third one's in the wild with me? And the third one is with you. Are you you're spreading the first, them out like the rings? You're the like first in, one to have in, this in thing. In Middle Earth? Um, <laughs> what is happening? So like, you gave me really good feedback on the prayer journal. Yeah. So that helped us do that. But I think it was more watching you go from podcaster to author. You still do music yep. at an at a efficient level that's Thank fire. You. So this is my very first 60-day devotional journal that is one of three samples we're getting we're about to have them in stock next month and uh it is inspired by not only you giving me a different vision of what i could be doing on youtube like podcasting but just the broader vision of doing stuff beyond just content like oh, actually dude, having gorgeous dude and so that's taking people it's called occupy till i come based on luke 16 13 for sure jesus says occupy till i come yeah right and it's taking people through a 60-day oh, journey through through the overall narrative of Scripture. Every day there's a devotional, yep. and there's a prompt for the journals. So it's a it's an interactive devotional. Whereas yeah. people just do devotionals, and it's just a book. Right, right, right. And right, then right. you could do just a journal, like we've yep. been doing just journals. This is both. This yep. is taking a devotional and making it interactive yep. where people can read and then process. And as we beautiful. take them from Genesis to Revelation in 60 days. Uh, it's about 350 words per entry, which was very difficult to like get them through the narrative of the scripture and try to infuse anecdotes and stories Yeah, um, with the journal prompts. And then at the end, there's just like some extra notes. And so, um, bro, you the, are the, the pages first one. are gilded. Yeah, yeah. You're the like, first one to, serious, to, to, to hold one of those outside of my home. Bro, what what's with the envelope in the, the back? The envelope, yeah. We're not sure if we're going to keep that feature just because they that came on the sample. So that's a sample. Um, and some of them have, you know, like journals where you can like throw your, I don't know why anybody would want to keep that, but, uh, that is, uh, that is an envelope. I don't know if we're keeping it. <laughs> I think you should. Okay. You so, I should. so I'm the, I'm the type of nerd, right? 
that winds up, and, and this is true of all of my Bibles, mm -hmm. I'll have separate notes, mm -hmm. and then I wind up just sticking it in in this space. Okay. If there was a pocket, yeah. it would go there. Noted. Noted, yeah. But this is gorgeous. Yeah, and on, and that's the, so the back half of it is just notes. So yep. 60 days with a, a deal for every day, additional scripture reading, and then the questions, the journal prompts, and then mm. a section for prayer requests. And then the back end is just regular notes. So so the goal is to like get people through it, keep it on you, take it at church, you know? Yeah. The artwork is by um, Josh Nadeau from Sword and Pencil. And it's beautiful too. Yeah, so. Like this is some... Yeah, and awesome. it, it just fits everything you are. There, Thanks, there's that man. traditional kind of orthodox yeah, yeah, feel. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it's 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 vibey. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like and then there's like four sermons in it that I could just go off the pictures and get. Here here's what I'm geeking off of. Um I'm geeking off where this um this uh bookmarker is. Mm -hmm. This nice little beautiful ribbon bookmarker. Mm -hmm. Day forty four and undivided heart, the re like the fact that it's on there mm -hmm. is probably just landed in there because it's the middle of the book. But for me, because I'm so big on con being a congruent person, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like that's like mm. that's even confirmation. Look at God. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Look at God looking at you. <laughs> I love it, man. So thank you so much, yeah, bro. Man. That's so, special, man. I'm excited. So yeah, we don't even have those in stock. Like this isn't not like a you know, hey, drop this next month. So right, right, like, this right. Is just, I just brought this for you because I was I like, appreciate it. I, I wanted to make sure I had samples for this trip. And, uh, and that's dope. You have I just like the way it feels. Yeah, you've inspired me to do to just always dream beyond. Yeah, the what's in front of me. Yeah. So when for I came sure. on the first thing, it was like just YouTube. Yeah. Then it was like podcasting. Yeah. Then it was you know expanding with with the journals and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah. And a lot of that is just watching you, man. Just watching you level up. Well, you you've um. The extension of everything you're doing is from the live streams on to now is you're you're helping to disciple people, mm -hmm. right? And take them through a process. That's that's one of the things that I find um very interesting about the way that you're wired is you're wired to take people through something. Mm. That's why your lives do so well, is cause you're not just sitting up there like talking. You're like trying to help people wrestle with a thing and take them through it and like help them think about it mm. in a different way mm -hmm. or just think period because mm -hmm. some people not even thinking they just some consume people, it yeah, you, yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so um i really appreciate that bro yeah, that's man. really dope yeah. well i'm glad you're here i'm glad to be here what 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 do you want to talk about like when i have somebody like you on and we already <laughs> and we've already established like you're like first of all two years ago we got into a story that included your penis and how my penis saved my family's how, life. How your penis cut. literally <laughs> saved your family's <laughs> life. Intended. And then you were like, I don't, should I have said that? <laughs> like, like, like you were like, I don't think I've ever said that. And then I said that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's up from here. Like, wh what are you musing? What are you into right now? I, I know what I'm noticing from you, but mm -hmm. like, what are you, what, what's, what? oh man, okay. This is this is we just just jump in. Yes. There's a lot. There's a lot. But this is what I've been thinking about. This is what I've been thinking about. I've been given a more conservative audience hmm. than I'm hmm. than I'm used to. Okay. And not just conservative, folks that w w society has historically dismissed as like conspiracy theorists. Mm. Mm. And I would Two, three years ago, four years ago, I'd kind of make fun of these people. Mm. Kind of roast them. Mm -hmm. Y'all tripping, you know, mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the QAnon mm -hmm, people, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And lately, we've been making videos that I think speak to them mm -hmm. and acknowledge what it is that they're afraid about and concerned about without dismissing them as lunatics and crazy people. Okay. Now, when you say you've been given... How how I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Who gave you these people, Ruslan? You know, this is what I think. This is what I think. When 2022 happened, around the same time I came on on your pod, mm -hmm. this is when Roe v. Wade got overturned. Yep. I came out and was like, I don't think this is the end of the world. I think right. you guys are tripping. Right. Like, I think right. I think this is a good thing. Right, right. That got me lumped in as like you're a part of the right. Mm, got you. Of course. Right? Yes, and of course. I have been the same guy. Yep. 
a centrist, yep. more or less. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the Overton window has shifted, mm -hmm. and I found myself pushed to the right. Got you. Now I'm not like a Trumpster. Like I'm not. Right. I don't got like a MAGA hat. Right. You know. Uh, yeah. I'm. I'm not on that type of energy. But like policy wise, like right. I'm over there. Right. For sure. And and, and not that that I think like injustices haven't happened and, and there's no structural issues that marginalized communities are dealing with. I think all that's real. I still think the only solution is we got to figure it out. Right. The, no one's sure. coming to save us. The government's not coming to save us. Absolutely, we got to figure it out. Yeah. And then when you factor in the unborn, when you factor in the right to protect yourself. So I think these people just like have kind of found me. Yep. And so instead of like poking and trying to push them away, right. we've kind of had some fun with leaning into some of their concerns, but trying to shepherd them away. There's a difference between being skeptical and being cynical. I agree. Right? There's a yeah, difference sure. between discernment and despair. Right. And I feel like a lot of the, the content, especially in election year, man, you could easily slide into cynicism. You could easily slide into despair. Every four and, years. And, and just, you know, completely losing yourself and, and becoming, you know, a lot of people are concerned about Christian um, Christian nationalism. Mm -hmm. And I have some some gripes with that, and I've talked to some Christian nationalists, but I, th I think my concern is Christian nihilism. Mm. Like, I'm afraid of Christian nihilism. Mm. Like, what happens if Christians become nihilistic and mm. grow in despair? And, like, who's going to do the work? Like, who's right. going to love the unlovable? Who's yep. going to be the hands and feet of Jesus? Who's right. going to care for the widow and orphan? If we just grow in despair, we just go, the world's going to hell in a handbasket, right. everything is bad, yep. it's beyond redemption, yeah. I'm just going to check out and go build me a little compound yep. and Absolutely. prep for the end of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, no, no. 10 we years worth of ramen noodles. Yeah, like, no, 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 we got to usher in the goodness. We yeah, got to usher sure. in the beauty. Absolutely. And so I'm really trying to figure out how to love these people um, and acknowledge what they're afraid of yep. without enabling mm. and, but redirecting yeah for sure so we just did a video and it got me in a lot of trouble people thought that it was like oh man you've gone full off the rails we did a video because i saw this on x and it was the whole the the florida hurricane situation yep. and people on x were going crazy and we're like yo this is man-made mm -hmm. they're causing these storms <laughs> they're trying to make florida flip blue and i was like they sent a storm to do that bro during hurricane season yeah, bro during hurricanes. So so we made a video going over the actual science yeah. of putting uh seeding the the atmosphere to create water mm -hmm. and and how there's truth yeah, they're, they're, yeah. that they can control the weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, that's not what this is. Right. Right. And so it's like acknowledging because every conspiracy, every good conspiracy, got some truth in it. I bet you it does. So, like, let's acknowledge the the facts that you're concerned about. Right. While at the same time saying However, right. that's not what this is. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah, and sure. we reference the scripture in I want to say in Isaiah, do not call a conspiracy what these people call a conspiracy. Instead, mm. fear the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right. Who could actually, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's yes. kind of foreshadowing what Jesus yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you know, sure. don't fear the one that can destroy your body, destroy. That's right. And so it's like, hey, like a, a healthy fear of God should keep you away from a fear of man yeah. and whatever they are doing, whoever they are. Yep, yep, yep. And so yeah, we've been having that kind of kind of you know, and I had to like bounce it off some people. Like I, I sent it to some of my more liberal and progressive friends and was like, do you, do you think this is whack? And they're mm. like, bro, that's a master class on how to engage somebody that's, mm. that's on, on way over there yeah, 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 and yeah. try to like r gently reel them back into like, no, 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 you have a responsibility. Right. You get to control the controllables. Right. Oh, and by the way, here's a nonprofit that you can give that's actually on the ground right. doing the work to help people who are devastated in Asheville, to help people that are devastated in parts of Florida, yeah. right? To give them a call to action. So we've been having fun with that and that's caught me some because if you look at the titles of the videos folks would think like i've went completely off the rails right and it's like no 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 no, no. these people are here yeah. i'm not gonna push them away and make fun of them yeah for sure they got here somehow yeah for sure let me let me lean into their concerns while attempting to shepherd their heart and love them well all right so i i think um one, one of the things that i find very um interesting in this space from the people that you would say are, you know, you caught some flack, like, what are you doing yep. talking to these people? Well, you were listening to them first. Mm -hmm. So you listen to them, which is something that if people write, if the, if the people write you off, they're, they're not listening to mm -hmm. you, right? Mm -hmm. You were listening to them. They're actually mad at hearing your response to them. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the part that 
I find very, very interesting about these people that want to write you off when they see and or hear you mm -hmm. responding to someone that you chose to listen to. Mm -hmm. Like, I've already listened to you. Mm -hmm. I know where you stand. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, there's some... There's a new group mm -hmm. that's coming. What, what are you saying over there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, you got on a MAGA hat? Mm -hmm. The devil is a lie. Like, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, mm -hmm. Trump sucks. Like, like it's it's just giving lazy. Mm. That it, it just gives lazy for people to, to only hear your response and then judge you off who you were talking. Like, yeah. that's a weird... Here's how I describe social media. Because I, I had to experience all this, like, new. Because mm -hmm. prior to 2022, who was I? Mm -hmm. I was just pastoring my little church and loving my life, right? But the way I describe it is if, if, I, if I open up all my windows and I'm having a party and we're all talking loud and some neighbors are walking through my neighborhood and they hear 90 seconds while they're walking mm -hmm. of a conversation – from my house, they could keep walking and have all types of opinions about me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, if they stopped and listened to the whole conversation, that's kind of weird too, because now you're ear hustling. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you look like a creep in front of my yeah. house just listening yeah, to the whole yeah. conversation. Yeah, on social media, we'd call that hate watching. Hate what? I, I didn't that's know a, that was a, a thing. thing. That's a thing, bro. That's a thing. There will be people that just sit around and hate watch to try and find some little thing and you know what I mean? Oh, I've definitely been yeah. hate watched. Yeah. I didn't know that was a I didn't know there oh, was a that's, term. That's thing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, okay, so so then I guess I'm delusional for because I keep trying to say like just unfollow. Mm -hmm. no. I should stop? No, no, no. They're not going to do it. Well, because <laughs> it's like a there's a there's a there's a secondary and I and I don't I don't want to hyper generalize these folks, but there's a secondary economy around hate watching to then clip up and facts. Right? And, and some of it, I think, could be helpful. And some of it, I think, is mean-spirited. Yeah. Some of it can be charitable. Like, I think Mike Winger is a guy that I believe generally is trying to be charitable, mm -hmm. even if he's pushing back on something. Um, he's being charitable. And then there's other stuff that's just not charitable. They're just starting believing the worst about you. Okay, so I don't know Mike Winger. So okay. so I'm I'm indifferent or, sure. or neutral is probably a better word. But would you call what he's doing hate-watching? No, like what is no, he no, doing? No. no, I think Mike Winger is, and if so, Mike Winger, Calvary Chapel pastor in Southern California, okay. uh, was kind of early to Christian YouTube, if mm -hmm. you will. He kind of mm -hmm. he was kind of like one of the pioneers, him and Alan Parr, mm -hmm. and he does stuff like his. This man's, I want to say, it was it eleven hour or a thirteen hour video on women in ministry? Oh my god! Every single thing you could take about that conversation, the egalitarian, the complementarian, the soft complementarian, the um patriarchal 13 position, hours straight? 13 hours straight of going to the to the to the primary sources, the scriptures, the commentaries, wow. the gold standard of every argument. He'll go over that and then he'll land at this is what I believe and this is what I think a woman can do and can't do in church. And 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 so that like he does stuff like that, which wow. I think that that's even pushing the, the, the way that YouTube is being used, like that's a different, I've never seen anybody do a 13 hour video. It was either 13 hours or 11 hours. So yeah, he yeah. does stuff like that. But then he'll also do something like um, a bit a four hour video on Benny Hinn. Mm -hmm. He'll do a video on the Passion Translation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He'll do a video, right? He'll have, he'll kind of splice it up. Yep. And then on Fridays is his like, ask Pastor Mike, whatever number of questions. Gotcha. Right. And so sometimes like, I, like I, interesting enough, I juxtapose your polygamy video with yep. his polygamy video. Gotcha. You guys were saying the same thing. Yep. And that will open up his like Friday stream. He'll answer a question and then there'll be nine other questions that he answers live. The yep. one he preps for. And so, yeah, so he's kind of a, he's kind of a, a pioneer in that sense. Yeah. Well, what happens is, so he is a pastor. He's yep. in a local church. Yep. He's, actually shepherded people yep. so I can, when he gets I can on, respect that yeah when he gets on youtube you get that that temperament from him you get that yeah. sentiment from the way he speaks the tone yeah so he can be stern and harsh yep. at times but not but his tone is so gentle and yeah. soft yeah yeah, you yeah, know? yeah yeah versus someone that will kind of see what worked for him and yep. then kind of follow in those footsteps and they may not be as 
connected to a local church or gentle or charitable as he is, gotcha. if that makes sense. So you're talking about the junior high intern pastor that <laughs> starts a YouTube channel I mean, some, and some, was like, these mega church pastors need to quit yeah, now. Yes. Yeah, so some of them are younger. Some of them are older. Some of them are way old. Yeah. And, and in a way I've just been thinking about them is, is I think they're attempting to be good Bereans, even when they criticize me. I think they're attempting to be good Bereans and in that, they will, unfortunately, we all do this to certain degrees, man, is we'll, we'll take our circle mm -hmm. and make our circle the standard. We'll make our yeah. little theological slant the standard. Yeah. And and then whatever doesn't fit within that thing, we'll just say, oh, it's bad. And so they'll, they'll just make kind of categorical errors. So yeah. it's like, I had somebody on who was an amazing ghost, a ghost guest, they were not a ghost, <laughs> praise God. They were not a ghost, they were a guest. Um, but this person had an affinity for the Passion Translation. Okay. I don't rock with the Passion Translation. Yeah. I think the Passion Translation is dangerous. It's one guy with no training in Hebrew or Greek saying God told him to fix the Bible. That's oh, the summary of it. That's, most people don't know that. That's scary. Yeah, most people don't know. They're like, oh, it's so poetic. It's so beautiful. And it's like... Uh, God told him to fix it? Yeah, yeah. And this is all documented. Him? And, yeah. And, 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 and to be fair to that brother, he's going through it. Health issues. Oh, I'm praying for him. Um, that sucks. So... I had someone on who loved the Passion Translation. Mm -hmm. I don't like the Passion Translation. I think it's unhelpful. Mm -hmm. But I'll sit down and talk to people that That's I disagree the with. Thing, right? Bro. But there will be but people. You'll talk to them, though. I'll talk to them. And, they, and this didn't even come up because I was like, this person has so much value to add yeah. in all these other areas. Yeah. I don't not, need yeah, to yeah, unhash. Yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. like the Passion. Right, right. right did yeah, you? I don't yeah, need to unhash that. And yeah. so I got some messages like, how could you sit down with so and so? And I'm like, well, listen, we thought about it, we prayed about it. We, we counted the cost. It wasn't enough to say, I'm going to mark and avoid this person as not a Christian. Right, for I think sure. Could, I think somebody could be very wrong about the Passion Translation yeah. and very right about Jesus and other areas that they're presenting value to that's really solving people's problems. Yeah, for sure. And the feedback on a, on a, on a podcast was amazing. It was a yeah. great podcast. Really good stuff. And yeah. so that, I, I think about it that way. Not everyone is processing conversations like that right? the majority of people are not they're not this because they can't hold tension they can't hold tension yeah. and it's the guilty by association fallacy, yeah for sure you know and i just don't i don't subscribe to that i mean if you based on the reaction the, the how could you's are weird to me because um the disciple but the disciples were the same way with jesus mm. like like i knew it was like a situation I'm saying this like I was there, but the way I read the Bible is I see it in pictures. So it is mm -hmm. kind of like I was there, but it, it, I feel like it's the same situation that happened. I knew, I knew we, we was all in need of a savior for real, for real. When John the Baptist was like, yeah, we found some people that was healing people, casting out demons in your name, but they wasn't with us. Was that John the Baptist or was, was that, was that one of the others? I'm, I'm, please forgive me. Not yeah. John the Baptist, John the Beloved. John the Thank Beloved. You. It, it was yeah. John the Beloved that said it. And like John, John is the closest one to him. Mm -hmm. John is laying on his chest. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is listening to Jesus when he starts talking. John's listening when he takes his breath in. Mm -hmm. Like, like yeah. you know what I mean? He's already the like, one whom Jesus loved. The one whom Jesus loved. <laughs> About you know what I'm saying? Himself a third person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like you, like if John is making that mistake, mm -hmm. then I have grace for people Come that on. that is like he's not with us. And look yeah. at him over there yeah, yeah, yeah. talking to them. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, how are we gonna reach people if we ain't talking to them? Yeah. These are the, these people would be like, how dare you talk to Nicodemus tonight? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? If he ain't, if he ain't bold enough to talk to you in the daytime, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be talking to him. Mm -hmm. How dare you come back for Thomas? If he didn't have faith, well, it should have just been eleven. So it's yeah. just like, I'm like, I read the whole Bible, dog. Mm -hmm. The whole Bible's tense. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. The whole thing. Not like a little piece mm -hmm. of it. The whole thing is yeah. tense. Yeah. I, I'm going through. Um, uh, the Bible again. I, I I read it every year, sometimes multiple times a year, and but I'm reading it back in after I got I started reading um, NLT in 08, but I cut my teeth on King James. So you you've done the Bible in a year through the King James? Oh yeah. Oh respect. Yeah yeah like like yo that King James in the Bible in a year. Nineteen ninety six. So I've ran I've read through the Bible in a year. The one that like actually comes. Yeah. Primarily in NIV, NLT, ESV, 
And I think we tried the New King James one year, and we was like, mm. New King James is what I'm doing now. New King James is what you're doing yeah. now. Yeah, it, it, uh, Thompson Chain reference, because mm -hmm. it, and it's a Bible my dad gave me. Mm -hmm. When I first gave my life to Jesus, mm -hmm. he gave me that Bible. Mm -hmm. So I'm, Are you doing chronologically, or are you doing the... Because I like the uh, chapter of the Old Testament, chapter of the New Testament. Oh, I'm going Psalm straight through. You're just going through. Oh, I'll, go, I'll go straight through. Respect. Yeah, I'll go straight through. Respect. So so I'm in I'm in Genesis, and I'm, I'm on a... Th there's... There's two ways that I'll read the Bible. Obviously, I can get through multiple times in a year if I'm doing 10 chapters a day, mm -hmm. right? I, I just, I'm just in. Because I'm just reading to read. I'm not trying to like sure. slow down study. This one, again, is, is the book my daddy gave me. It's the book I cut my teeth on. So I'm, I'm strolling through. And so it's like between three and six chapters a day. And there's a lot more reflection. Mm -hmm. and And I'm looking at, The the wipeout of humanity, right, and animals in six, seven, and eight. Then I'm watching the confusion of languages mm. in eleven, the pit stop of Tira before eleven's over, the summons of Abram in twelve, the lie of Abram in twelve that gets Hagar into his camp, mm -hmm. thirteen. Lot leaving, 14, let's go get Lot back. You know what I mean? The tide to Melchizedek, 15, 16. Sarah's like, Sarai, still at the time, go sleep with Hagar. And as soon as Hagar gets pregnant, then she's pissed with him. for. The, so it's like, this is tense. Mm -hmm, this, mm -hmm. we, we 18 chapters mm -hmm. in, it's hella tense. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't give us relief. Mm -hmm. There's no relief. Yeah. I <laughs> I'm with you. I took I took my uh nine year old Levi, you met Levi through Genesis. Mm -hmm. So we're almost done with Acts. And um there was one chapter we just I just had to skip. Nineteen? It was a chapter with the rape. Oh. The yes. The rape and then the and then the we the come dismemberment. back. We finna come we y'all get circumcised and then we'll be we'll be cool. And then Yep. While they're all hurting, <laughs> yeah. just wipe them all yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sure. said, man, he is not like we just <laughs> explained because we've been having you know the birds and the bees I conversation. Just got him through. I just got him through the, the 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 sexual pleasure conversation. Right, right, right. Right. Like I had I had that conversation with them a couple months before. Yeah. I was like, this is we were we've talked about polygamy. Yeah. We've talked about the consequences. We we've talked about all these other things. I can't now unpack the open. Pandora's box on what yeah. sexual assault is. Yeah, for sure. And then wiping out an entire bit. So we just we that was the we just skipped a yeah. whole chapter. Yeah, I, like, I can't bro. I'm not I can't do this. Not, he's not. <laughs> he's, he's not. Nine. <laughs> You'll come we'll come back at 13. We'll come back. 13, 14, we'll come 15. Back for the, yeah. For the rated, rated NC seventeen yeah, chapter. Exactly. But that's the whole book though. Mm -hmm. The whole book is that's like that. Yeah, that's a fact. We 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 um we did a Q and A. Uh well we we were doing our Monday live and somebody was talk somebody in the chat. Because our community is very, very open. So they were like, um, I have I have an STD and I don't know if I'm going to get married. Oof. And I was like, yo, I get it. But I've actually performed the weddings and did premarital for people mm -hmm. that, full disclosure, this is what I have. And the partner's like, I still love you. We'll make it work however we need to do it. But I was like, also, somebody married Rahab. Mm. Like, all of Jericho had been through her. Mm. Jeez. Yeah. Like we don't, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, we, yeah. we read it and we're like, Rahab's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's like, she's a prostitute. Yeah, she was a prostitute. Why do you think the king had his crew go to her house? Because mm. everybody went through there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These are the first two men that didn't try to hit on her. Mm. She, so she not only does she get accepted into the Israeli community, somebody wifes her. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is she... Is she She's in the, the genealogy of she Jesus. She is. Indeed, she is. Yeah. But but you see what I'm That's saying? That's crazy. Like we, yeah. So we'll say, even a prostitute is in there. But like, slow down, though. Mm. He just dissed you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All of Jericho ran through her. Mm. This was her. She protected her family. Mm. She made more money than everybody in her mm. family. Right? Like, she, it was her house. Right? So it's like. That tension doesn't get relieved throughout the, the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. Not even with Jesus' death and resurrection. Mm -hmm. It actually gets more complicated because now people are dying mm -hmm. for believing that he rose. Mm -hmm. So 
and 2,000 years later, th there's still no chill. Mm. So, so I'm, I'm for the relief. Mm -hmm. And if people, you, you hold that tension, I shouldn't say, no, I'm not for the relief. I'm for the tension. Mm -hmm. And you hold it well, and it's just, it makes me uncomfortable to see people uncomfortable with you holding tension mm. or with me holding tension. Mm -hmm. They're like, let it go. Yeah. Pick yeah. a side. Yeah. I don't like you over here. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> you, you had a guest yeah. that I liked, and then the next yeah. one, I hate that guest. And yeah. now I don't yeah. even know if I want to walk you anymore. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. Yeah. I think I, I would say that I probably get that more from folks who are probably a bit more on the liberal end. Okay. And it sounds like you get that more from folks that are a bit more on the conservative For end. For sure. So we're kind of like on opposite ends of it's that. It's true. You know? It's and very true. My views haven't changed that much. Yeah. You know? Like, I'm... I'm I still hold the same views more or less that I've always held. Like yeah. We, I've always been unapologetically pro-life. Yeah. You know? Even when trying to understand both sides. And I've always acknowledged that, like, yeah, man, like, there's some structural issues that because of past bad laws and yeah. bad systems have impacted people today. Yep. And it's complicated, yeah. you know? And so I think I think that my views have remained the same. Perhaps I've, I've, I've kind of clarified them more, um, but I've definitely felt more pushed into the right. But then you get a little too deep in the right and they just be flat out anti-Semitic. Oh, dude, you know, it's, it's they, crazy. They just say, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't say that kind of stuff around me, dog. Yeah. They just they just say stuff, you the, know? The right... Um, uh, Not everybody on the right, but like when, yeah, when yeah. you get into certain when circles. You, yeah, yeah, when you get into certain yeah. uh, area codes, yeah. we'll put it that way, right? Yeah, 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 Demographically, when you get into certain area codes on the right, yeah. their replacement theology mm -hmm. is disturbing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little dark. <laughs> it's a little dark. But then it, they'll get into like... Uh, oh, my God. They'll get into stuff like... You know, we think women shouldn't vote. I'm like, what? This is a thing, bro. So I thought this is like red pill stuff. I thought it's like pearly things, red pill stuff. Nah, there's like some Christian nationalists that are like, no, we think it should be one vote per household and the men should get the vote and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, but for what? Like, why? 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 Like, it's way harder to take something, a right from someone than to, than to, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for like, sure. Like, you're trying to, and so, so yeah, so, so you get in this, I got, I got, I had some of those conversations. And I was like, oh, like, yeah, nah. <laughs> like this. All right, all right. This is interesting. I'm I'm fascinated by this. All right, so here's the thing that I'm that 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 I am one of the one of the reasons why I love you so much, and it's a different wiring than me. Mm -hmm. So I wanna I wanna explore this. You you know about a lot. Mm -hmm. Like you, you are able to like absorb cultures, mm -hmm. and then kind of synthesize it, and then like, well, here's how I think about all these things. Mm -hmm. What? How? Well, you know, here, <laughs> here's here's how because, like, growing up Armenian, growing up Armenian, hearing about the Armenian genocide, yeah, while having predominantly black friends. You start understanding that humanity is humanity. Yep. Everybody got something crazy and traumatic in their right. bloodline. Facts. Everybody has been the villain and the victor to some degree. Right. And we're not that yeah. different. No. Right. I agree. Like I absolutely like, agree. And, and, and and so like Ar Armenians are very similar with, with the lineage mm -hmm. as well as some of the stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Armenians always late. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like mm -hmm. they know how to dance. Like mm -hmm. so 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 you get into and I was like we're not. We're not that different. Mm. We're not that different on a, on a human level. And you get it, you know, you go you go to, you start meeting Irish people. Yeah. You understand their history. And yeah. you're like, you guys aren't that different. You nope. got your own thing yeah, that, you, that you dealt with. You, right. you, you, so, so like, you, you meet Israeli people. Right. And you go, we're not that different. Right. Y'all got your own thing, right. right? For sure. And so I think the more I learn and I'm around people, I start seeing that like we're not as different as we think we are. Right. We all struggle. Yeah. We we all have some form of of traumas. Yeah. We all being poor and white is hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being poor and black is hard. Yeah. Being poor is hard. <laughs> For right. Sure. Now you might be looked at different. Right. But the guy that's in a biker gang with face tattoos. Right. Got it hard. Yeah, for you know? sure. And so it's like, I think the more I have those conversations, the more I go, man, we're not as different as we think we are. Yeah. We all, we all, and I'm, and I'm not, and what I'm not advocating for is like some like 
color, race, color, and don't look at color. Like no, I'm not, I'm not no, saying no, that. No, 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 for sure. I, that we, we're different in, 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 in some aspects, but we're much more alike than I think we are. And so once, once I start seeing that, I'm like, oh, there's, we're very similar, but yeah. we let these like superficial reasons divide us and not really. And then, and then that gives room for bad ideologies and worldviews to creep in. And that's the dangerous part to me. It's a great, okay, great. I, that I appreciate that. That makes sense in my head. How do you cut through culture, like the noise of because in my mind, and just correct me, am I wrong? In my mind, I feel like you have a TV with like. Have you ever seen NFL Red Zone? Mm -hmm. I feel like you have NFL Red Zone, but just like for culture. Oh, <laughs> it's like eight squares yeah, yeah, yeah. on a on a on an eighty inch. LED wall in your house, and uh -huh. you're like, Fox News is saying that, <laughs> MSNBC is saying that. That's funny. This is what they're saying on The View, yeah. and here's what they're saying on somebody's YouTube channel. Like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. the way, like, cause you, you hit everybody. Like, like you, you hit everything. It seems like you, mm. you have your posts on everything. That's what I'm trying to get yeah. to. Yeah, I think you know. One, I think it just becomes an overflow of who I am. Mm -hmm. So I'm a, I'm an Armenian refugee, white kid, who's always been into hip hop, and my entire family that lives with me is black. Yeah. So that that is already a thing. You know what I'm saying? Like that's already a very interesting framework. To have. <laughs> All right, but I'm, I, I see everything in pictures, and the way you just said that made it seem like you you you're Armenian and you grew up in hip hop. And so you just moved in with a black family. No, you married a black woman. I, I married a black woman. <laughs> but but my apartment complex was all black families. Yeah, the yeah, folks for sure. that shared the gospel with me at first were, and prophesied over me. You're going to do great things for the Lord someday. You're going to reach millions of people for the Lord. We're all black Christian folks. Got you. You know, and, and they exhibited that tension yep. of, of, of grace and truth. Yeah, for they, sure. They exhibited that. You, you're you bugging right now. Yeah. You, you were out of control. Yeah. But God still loves you and we still love you. And, yep. there's, and there's still a plate at this table. Yes, yeah, dope. Know? And so I, I I grew up in it, and then I, my interests just kind of slowly became broader and broader. So in high school, I was I, I had a one teacher that was super duper conservative, and another teacher that was a Democrat, and yeah. I got to hear them talk about current events. That was my favorite time in high school. So the government teacher would talk about current events, and the history teacher would come, and I just yeah. liked hearing their. Ask now, both of those folks would be considered far right now. Right, 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 right. right exactly. <laughs> in terms of what they believed twenty five years ago. Yeah. So I just I've always been interested in the like politics and geopolitics because yep. it had an impact yeah, on me directly. For sure. in my lineage. Directly, absolutely. And then as I got married, I started paying attention to my friends that were getting divorced. Yeah. And I started paying attention to why they were getting divorced. And yep. I started paying attention to my friends that were getting married and weren't getting married, having kids out of wedlock, not having kids out of wedlock, the consequences of that, the socioeconomic burdens of that. And I just paid attention, you yeah. know? And so I read books and then like, as these things kind of kind of surfaced, I just, me and my wife had gone through Love and Respect 15 years ago. Yeah. We read that we read that book. We, yeah. we, we went through and kind of worked out a lot of these things. And so this, it kind of becomes an overflow of just who I am and my interests, yep. you know? Yeah. I've, I've always been into conspiracies. Yeah. Like, 96, November, I'm at the library in Kensington off of Adams, and I'm looking up who really killed Tupac, mm. or if Tupac's really dead, mm. and the Caluminati seven-day theory, mm. and did the, the FBI get him? Mm -hmm. And then Biggie dies, and mm -hmm. I'm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, that's always, and then it was like the 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 the, the 9 11 conspiracy. So, I've always yeah. been into some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. matured and been yep. like, yeah, everything ain't a big shadowy cabal right, that's right. pulling the strings. <laughs> right, they're not that smart. But there's some interesting things that have happened that we would say is, is crazy. Yeah. I can't believe that happened. And it's like, no, that happened. Yeah, for sure, yeah. that happened. So, I think it, it just becomes kind of like an overflow of, of who I am. And, and then I just make content based on what people are asking me about. So, People ask me about, hey, what do you think about Northwest talking about Jesus with her siblings and telling and teaching them how to pray? Oh, I mean, I, I think it's cool. Yeah. Let me talk about it some more. You yeah. Know, it's it's really that simple. Like the content is just what does my audience want my thoughts on? And I just kind of share my thoughts. And then sometimes I usually try to anchor it to scripture and try yep. to bring them back to the word, yep. you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, it's really that simple. Like what are people asking me about? And let me try to be as charitable and reasonable as possible. Let me tell you the two words that were so loud. I heard everything you said. 
but the two words that were so loud and it shows in the way that you kind of matriculate through uh, the way you share your content, paid attention. Mm. I just paid attention. There's a lot of people out here, they ain't even paying attention. And they ain't paying attention in their house. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. they don't they don't notice nothing. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's you gotta pay attention mm. to be able to give like a any viewpoint, perspective, or opinion that has any substance to it. Mm-hmm. You have to pay attention. You just can't flippantly hear something Mm -hmm. and just be like, oh, I think it's like, did Mm. a person didn't finish their sentence? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have full context. Like, Mm. people will say, what do you think about so and so? I'd be like, I haven't paid attention enough, Mm. right? I'm too busy answering y'all's questions. Mm -hmm. Like, like Mm -hmm. over here, like, we got to do all the vulnerable stuff because everybody's like, mine is so trauma informed Mm -hmm. because of my own story. Mm That I pay attention to that, so I was just interested in yeah. Well, I what think, made I think, you pay attention? That's, I, I that's think fascinating. We're, we're doing the same thing from different perspectives. Absolutely meaning, meaning correct. This, you, we were downstairs talking before we we started podding, and, and you were sharing like your life experience of pastoring and yeah. your connection to seeing people's humanity. Yeah, and that is a wealth of experience that you can pull from, and you know that the same things that were happening. 20 years ago are still happening today. Things that happened 15 years ago are happening today. That's right. It's just more mainstream and it's and, and the world's smaller because of the internet. Facts. But you paid attention and understand where people are at. And right. that, see, I think good content isn't about us. It's about the people. Correct. Right? So good Correct. content is just, it's really about them. Right. So when you're talking about being vulnerable and I'm trying to help people think through whatever event is happening or whatever cultural moment, mm-hmm. it's really about the person. Mm-hmm. And I think if you make the content, the the, to- the podcast, the product about them and solving a problem they have, mm-hmm. hey, some of you guys need to be willing to be vulnerable and talk about the things that have kept you messed up. Yeah. And, and put that stuff in the light. Yeah. That's about, that's literally about them. Yeah, for you're sure. You're showing your scars. Right. But you're, you're talking about them. Correct. And I think, people miss that and yeah. so it's like if i'm just talking about me that's actually not good content i right. might have an interesting story here or there right but it's really about what do the people want yeah what do the for people sure care about yeah and how could i help anchor them in in the word and the truth and in you know the yeah. local body yeah i remember uh when i first gave my life to jesus um y- you know the biggest thing that i talked about was you know freedom r- really the 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 breaking of the silence of uh, pain from my sexual abuse as a child and blah, 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 right. And then, um, and so I was really big on Revelation 12, right? We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. I'm going to share my testimony everywhere I go. And then after like two years, I was like, I'm sick of my testimony. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of it. This, this and this, my testimony is not one one size fits all. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why the gospel is the good news. That's good. My testimony is not not good news. It's the result of good news, yeah. but it is not the good news. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And that won't travel around the world. Like mm-hmm. that can't be my message mm-hmm. around the world. Mm-hmm. What my message can be around the world is that Jesus loved the world so much that he sent the son to die for it. That has legs. Yeah. That got me around the world, mm. right? And sometimes my testimony came up, but at all times Jesus came up, and that's just a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's the result of listening, mm-hmm. paying attention, mm-hmm. and it's the same thing with culture now. Is I I, I just I I wish that my my big wish is that we all just like led our lives from a place of vulnerability where we would fully pay attention to others mm. that we would be so se- we would be so self-aware that we could stop talking to listen as opposed to waiting for somebody to shut up so they can talk mm. that's good right it's it's well, my favorite show on ESPN is pardon the interruption hands down the I'm I'm going with Michael Wilbon and Tony Kornheiser until one of them dies or they just quit. But I've been watching them for over 20 years. And part of the interruption makes a great sports debate show. 
it makes a horrible Christian <laughs> person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Just waiting for somebody to shut up so you can be like, you're going to hell. Yeah. Like this, that, and that. Yeah. So I, I appreciate your your sensitivity to be self-aware and pay attention before you speak. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Because that way you can inform people, and you do, you inform people as opposed to, okay, I didn't even think this was going to be a bar, as opposed to conforming them mm. to a hot take or opinion mm -hmm. that might change later. Mm -hmm. And then you're trapped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's why I don't think uh, some of these young dudes, I just be like, you're not going to even think the same thing in five years. You I mean, should there's, hush. There's there's creators I know now that, that you know, have are in real time adjusting their content, mm. you know, and trying to figure out like, oof, like I built this audience and it was booming and the money was good, but... I gotta, I gotta figure this out. And the and way I, you get them is the way you gotta the, keep them. That's right. And I, and I've had to like adjust and pivot and 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 make changes. And yeah. and, and and I'm still making changes. Yeah. And, and reevaluating. I think now we're really trying to make what we call as net positive content. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. I don't want to just rail against something that someone does that's bad. Yep. I want to say, hey, these five things were good. Yeah. 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 And this one thing he yeah. work on, or I yeah, disagree yeah. with him on, or maybe yeah. he didn't think about it this way. Yeah. And so like that, that's that's real. But yeah, a lot of yeah, which what, what you what, how you get them is how you got to keep them. Yeah. Yeah. And they will turn on you in a minute. Oh, yeah. The moment you stop giving them what you gave them, yep. then they like, oh, you ain't the same yep. no more. Yep. And it's like, well, I'm a human, and I'm trying to grow mm -hmm. and develop. Mm -hmm. I won't use the word evolve because somebody's going to have a seizure. <laughs> uh, like, There's no evolution. I'm like, I'm just talking about like... <laughs> grow. <laughs> mentally. or <laughs> Develop spiritually you can evolve it's fine yeah. you know what i mean but that's that's a um yeah that's my heart yeah my heart is for people to just like yeah be, co be connected that's beautiful I so think, what are you doing with these people now so i mean I'm, I'm encouraging them to go to the to a local church good like get 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 in the local church that's a big thing we're advocating for yeah. so as long as you're in a not as long. You should be in a local church. Facts. Like Bedside Baptist ain't going to cut it. Nope. You know what I mean? Like you need to get in a local church. You need to get connected. You need to start serving. Um, it's cool to see people pop into my church and join my church. We've had quite a few people. You've met my pastor, Pastor mm -hmm. Jeff Moores, mm -hmm. uh, Rhythm Church, Oceanside, California. Local church, um, getting a word, mm -hmm. right? A lot of us want, want God's will for our life. And we're trying to like, we think God's will is this like fatalistic destination. Once I get to do this for a living, then I'll be happy and fulfilled. God, what is God's will for my life? Right. And I think God's will is evidenced in God's ways. Yeah. And it's less about the destination and more about are you actually handling yourself like a Christian? Right, absolutely. And living by his ways. Yeah. And God's ways are found in God's word. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And God's word is ultimately Jesus, but it's also the scriptures that we yeah. have today. Yeah, it's good. And, and so, I, like, getting people to say, hey, like, stop obsessing over your quote-unquote purpose and what God's will is and what you need to be doing and and finding your value and what you do for money. Yeah. That's not your, what you do for money is not your purpose. It's not yep. your calling necessarily. We all go through seasons and assignments. So it's really pointing people back into the scriptures. You need to get in the Bible for yourself. You need to learn. You need to get in community, local church oh, community. I'm so glad you're talking about and, that. And, 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 and I'd say the last part, honestly, is like, like you got to heal. Yeah. You got to heal. Because if you're doing the first two, you could be in a community and you could be in the word, but if you're not healing yeah. and not taking inventory of like, hey, some of that dysfunction that you're dealing with, mm -hmm. that that is actually a byproduct of the things you haven't dealt with. Facts. And so you're dealing with Facts. the fruit of these issues. You right. haven't done the work and, and dealt with the root of these. And, I, and that's not to say like everyone needs to go to therapy or everyone needs a mental health value. Like some of us- I think everybody does. Well, I think a lot of people do. <laughs> I think a lot of people do. I think, I think some people- um, I just need to get in the gym. Right. You might just need some better friends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you that, might, yeah, yeah, you might need to change your it's environment. True. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there's certain people like myself and, and, and you as well that like, man, the, the 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 sexual assault changed the brain. Facts. And that change to the brain isn't just gonna go away by just going to church, reading my Bible and right. lifting weights. I, I can mitigate a lot of the the triggers and the flare-ups with right. those things. But I have a, a great therapist, Dr. Rudy. We talk once every other week, and he's just like my mind coach. Yeah, for sure. You know, and absolutely. So it, it's also saying like, how can I bring those principles to people to even 
make sense of what they're feeling and yeah. what your emotions and, are. And this is, and I think that's why the, I think the, the conversation around therapy has to be elevated mm -hmm. because if as long, so long as therapy is still synonymous with something must be wrong with me, mm. then people are going to wait until something's wrong with them for yeah, therapy. That's good. But my, que my question to people that are like, yeah, I don't need therapy, right? I'm good. I'm like, do you feel your own cavities? Mm. Do you do surgery on your own tumors? Mm. Do you change your own oil? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. like who's who's doing what? Mm -hmm. Like, if you do you cut your own hair, mm. right? Or do you have a stylist? Do you push your own? Do you give yourself your own pu uh, your own pedicle uh, pedicles, pedicures, mm -hmm. right? If you don't do none of that. Mm -hmm then what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. Like, if you go to somebody else for that, what makes you think you know your own brain that well? Mm. That you know your own mental state that well? Mm -hmm. You'll see more of, you've seen more of my face today than I have. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, That's interesting. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not saying everybody has to go for some deep dive traumatic wound, mm -hmm. but it's like, there's something there. You need a brain checkup. You need a, you need brain. a mind checkup. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. if you're gonna good. go to the dentist twice a, a year, yeah. at least. Yeah. All I'm saying is check in with yourself, yeah. with somebody that you trust as much as you do that dentist, yep. as much as you do that hairdresser, yep. Yep. as much as you do that doctor, yep. Yep. as much as you do that mechanic. That's good. That's good. So that's why I say everybody. It's not like some. I'm. 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 My boys don't have my trauma. My trauma. Yep. They'll be set up by the time. Yeah. Nathan's already 16, so his therapist is on the way. Mm. Like, I just want them to check in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're trying to be the best parents we can be, yeah. and they still gonna need a little tweak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, yeah, yeah. I know. I think when you put it that way, and I talk, about, and I think about my own kids, and I think about, yeah, you know, does does he, he might need someone to talk to at some point? <laughs> <He> said, <laughs> like that's dad, beside me. Yeah, mom and dad can't be that's everything. Right. That's you know? right. So, Absolutely. No, that's, that, that's a good point. I think when you bring it down to the kids, I, I do think there are people who make trauma out of things that aren't necessarily traumatic and then they want to they want to carry that over them go on so if your pastor sits you down and goes <laughs> hey bro you you got to you got to stop sleeping with your girlfriend you can't do that like that's not that you can't do that and be on a choir you can't do that and be leading worship you got to stop it you can't can't do that and then somebody goes you said it somebody goes oh I got church hurt. Church hurt. I got church oh. hurt. No, you were disciplined. You were disciplined. Yeah. So I think there are things that our parents have done to discipline us. There are things that pastors have done to discipline us. There are things that maybe our friends in love have told us hard truths about ourselves. Yeah. And we've taken those things in, in a society that a bit, that, that is a bit uh, too obsessive with the self mm -hmm. have turned those things into traumas. Yeah. When... They weren't really trying. That's to not. That's very true, and yeah. that's not being dismissive. That's not being like callous. That's just the truth, man. Like my dad whooped my tail, bro, <laughs> with a braided belt Oof. that was government issued from the United States Postal Service. That thing left marks. Mm. There's not one spanking I got that I didn't deserve. Mm. Like, you, you, you spank your kids. I did. You did. I did. But then I stopped. I think Nathan might have been like 13 when he got his last spanking. Mm. Or no, maybe he was 14. Nathan was the last. I think it was 14. But I felt like, so I'm 7.9% Caucasian. Okay. And. I see it. Yeah. And um, I saw it when I was spanking mm. Nathan. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's a little. That feels like it's colonization Oof. a little bit. Yeah. I, I think the 7.9% flared up and was like, boy. And I was like, yeah, no, I can't let that out. Yeah. I, uh, I'm going to have to I've never, that. I've never, I, I, I will tell you what I do do. Yeah. But I've never spanked my son or my three year old. My three year old was a little too young. But, and my wife spanked my son one time when he was like four or five, he wandered off at Legoland mm. and him and his friend went to the store and they took a bunch of to like gifts and stuff <laughs> and like wandered off. And so he got, he got spanked for that. And I think, yeah. I think in hindsight, she, she regretted it. Mm. And I think it's, I think it's twofold. I think there is an element 
because my wife is black, where I don't know if this is conscious or not, but there definitely seems to be like the passing down of that sort of discipline through slavery mm -hmm. makes her uneasy. Mm. I don't want to speak too much for her, yeah, but for I, sure. I, I get that sense yeah, of yeah, like yeah. this stuff has been and where did it come from? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um and then and then on my side, what I do is I just instill the fear of God in my in my nine year old. Mm -hmm. So we we wrestle and we play fight, mm -hmm. and and I let him push the limits and mm -hmm. the boundaries, and to to to, to see it, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. how strong dad is or not strong dad yeah, is. Yeah. And I think in that regard, like it keeps a check mm -hmm. on him mm -hmm. and his and his behavior. Mm -hmm. But we also got great kids. Like we gotcha. also got sweet kids that yeah. they don't they don't you know yeah. like. You, we told you to go shower 10 minutes ago. Why haven't you showered? Well, I'm yeah. spank them for not taking a shower. Nah, all we ain't time. doing you know, all that. Like, like they don't, they're not really misbehaving. Yeah, for sure. And they're generally good kids and they're yeah. sweet, especially my nine-year-old, man. He is so attentive to other people's needs. Yep. He's not disrespectful. He's not rude. Yep. He's, you know, and so, yeah, so we, we've just... We had that one situation when he was little. Mm -hmm. And even in hindsight, looking back, like, man, he was four. Like, he probably didn't even understand that he yeah, was for sure. going and stealing. Yeah, from the it store. wasn't like he was like grand theft was on his yeah, mind. Like, yeah, <laughs> we about yeah. to get all the candy today. Yeah. We're going to yeah. use our parents as a front. Yeah. And we didn't even, I don't even think like we did time out with him. No, my kids at those ages, they, they, it was, it was around, I'm talking like between, Maybe nine and fifteen. Okay, they lose their mind a little bit. Okay, the puberty section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been preemptively yeah. having that conversation. Like, hey, just so you know, like your body's gonna change. I did your it. Voice is gonna change. Oh yes, yeah. I, I did. I, I I told him. I said I prayed for. I was like, I went around the world and and preached to youth and young adults, and I told the Lord, don't let me be effective with all of them, and I can't talk to my own. That's good. So I'm ready to chop it up and do yeah. all the things with you. Yeah. But yeah, they tested us a, a few times, like bold face lies, Oof. like you know what I'm saying. Like they were triple agents of like they were conditioned, they they were trained in Russia and then worked for the Chinese government <laughs> and then came to the U S. Oh. and stole the files. Oh my god! And then passed the lie detector test. They they was they was on that Whoa. kind of stuff, and I was like, no, nah, you got to get now. I must break you. Yeah. I had to turn into Ivan Draga. Yeah. I must break you. you. Yeah. So so yeah, it wasn't. It was none of their spankings were ever for the. Again, I have a very regulated nervous system, so I wouldn't even go spank them if I was angry. Mm, you know what I mean? It was definitely discipline, mm -hmm. tap, tap, tap. Mm -hmm. Do you get it now? Mm -hmm. Like until until the pain hits you up here, mm -hmm. you're going to feel it on your skin a little bit. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? And and you won't die. Yeah, It's just that last one, I was like, and I've only, uh, between my two sons, I I was dysregulated one time with Nathan. And I went too far mm. and I had to apologize and repent to him. Mm -hmm. And I went and talked to like all my mentors and like who are all fathers. And they were like, yeah, you know, we had that one time too. <laughs> like, it was like, <laughs> they, like not a one was like, oh, I'm so heartbroken. I've never had to do that. Yeah. They were all like, yep, yep. Mm. We, uh, we never, we didn't, we didn't escape. Mm hmm. Mm hmm that one momentary lapse where we forgot we were the adult mm, yeah you know yeah and we we squared up with yeah. the child yeah Oof. and and they've all been uh they if it's all been the male child they haven't obviously not with the i mean not that it couldn't happen with the with a daughter but so i had that one time with nathan and i had to apologize to him and repent and i'm like you're definitely getting my therapist number <laughs> You, I'm definitely gonna be hitting you up on on like as as puberty nears because I like talking to people that are a season ahead. Yeah, you know, so your boys are in you know yeah teenagers. sixteen. Uh, yeah. Nathan, uh, Noah will be fourteen. Yeah. So tomorrow. I'm we're on the precipice of that. Yeah. he's turning ten next month. Yeah, you know, so I'm like, all right, it's coming. Yeah, it's absolutely. Coming. We'll see how how bad it is. I'm trying to channel channel it early. So yep. we're also like, hey, like we got the gym at the house. Yeah, he knows how to do all the lifts. Yep. Pull up, yeah. bench press, compound. He could do all that stuff. Basketball. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that like giving him healthy outlets, so yep. like as that testosterone hits you, and yeah, them, exactly. And, and the balls drop. You, you already got. We we got the gym. You got a place to go. Let's let's go. You know, I'm hoping. I'm, I'm hoping that helps. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. Uh. We we did that with our with our boys as well. Um. They got gaming honest from me. Mm. Like that's their outlet. Mm. And um, they they're in. 
physical sports as well, but the gaming is is that's it, huh? That's it. Yeah, we're already like on I, that. We we, yeah. we game together. Yeah, yeah, and, for and, sure. And and that's you know he's into Minecraft right now and all that kind of stuff. So I I'm can't just, stand. Yeah, yeah, I'm just kind of like son. He's showing me all the cool stuff he's building, and I'm like, uh huh. It's yeah. terrible. Yeah, yeah. We're trying I don't to find know some how stuff. a game that pis- pixelated. Yeah, has been this successful. It. I don't get it. I think it's the it novelty of, of like building stuff and like I building know it, worlds. but it, why can't it look better? Yeah, I wish it looked better. It's terrible. Uh, I wish it really were. I, I we're into Star Wars, so we're like super big Star Wars. Somebody, yeah, someone's going to clip that and be like, "That's demonic." But yeah, Star Wars. And, how, what is demonic? About you know, Star you know how that stuff goes. But yeah, Star Wars has been good. A lot of conversations and and connections and parallels to god and truth and yeah. like you know but then also like distinctions like no nah, more pantheism yeah you know, it's not i wonder know? if the people that don't like star wars also don't like narnia if they're like super fundy about it. like if they're super fundamentalist probably you, you know what i'm saying yeah. like like i it just sometimes people it it's funny where people's lines are <laughs> you know what I mean? I just be, uh, that's one of the things I've learned in the last two years, Ruslan, is these jokers' lines are crazy. They're crazier than like state lines or county lines. <laughs> you, have you ever, you, you, I don't, you, you live in, is it Oceanside proper? I'm in Vista, which is one city over from Oceanside. Okay. But like if you looked at the yeah, map, yeah, yeah. couldn't you like cross two blocks and be in yeah. Oceanside? Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes I think people's lines are like that. They're not, not clear. Yeah. It's like, don't you dare watch Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I love Narnia. Mm. But like both of these dudes had an imagination. Yep, you're yep. just, you're just, your conscience is relieved that Aslan represents Jesus. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But can't Luke yeah. also represent mm-hmm, Jesus? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Can't Dark Vader be Beelzebub? Yeah. And can't the light fight the darkness? Yeah. Like, how come you can't see you that? You can't see that. Yeah. 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 No, that's good. That's weird. Do you do you feel like in the last two years? there were expectations placed on you as a creator that didn't reflect your initial vision and mission? Not expectations, assumptions. Assumptions. There okay. were assumptions. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the assumption was um, Tim has been a preacher all of these years, and he was a pastor, and this podcast is going to be the linear move to do the same thing he's been doing mm. here mm-hmm. and we this is we assume this we expect this mm-hmm. go mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then the more they listen they were like no 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 yeah. you can't say that mm-hmm. and why did you say that and then why did you say that like that mm-hmm. and this is how you talk all the time mm-hmm. I don't think Tim saved. Mm. Tim backslid. Mm. This is not consistent with the guy that was in the pulpit. Mm. Is this the way he talks to his mama? Does his daddy <laughs> know about this? Like, you know what I'm saying? It got just, it just got weird. Yeah. And I was, I was very, um, I, how, I much, th- how much did all that affect you? It affected me a lot because I'm an empath. Mm. And so I had never, I had never been misunderstood in mass mm-hmm, mm-hmm. ever in my life my adult life since giving my life to jesus at 20 up until two years ago i had never been misunderstood in mass mm. i've been you know i don't understand that sermon or whatever um but never misunderstood the way i'm misunderstood now and so uh and then not just misunderstood but labeled mm. yeah then I was like, oh, this is, and the Holy Spirit, and I'm like, well, I got to defend my name and I got to yeah, yeah, yeah. explain. Yeah. And then the Holy Spirit is like, don't. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, but that nigga going to think <laughs> he right if I don't. Yeah. And he's like, let it go. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, nah, because did you see the way his neck turned when he yeah. said yeah. what he said? Let me at least say something. Okay, not, okay, not on, okay, not on the video, Lord. But don't he live close? Can't I mean? <laughs> can I fly there real quick and just look yeah. him in the eye? Yeah. And the Lord's like, no, let it ride. And I'm, and that was where I had to go crucify mm. my flesh. I was mm. like, oh my god. Yeah, it seems like from my vantage point, there was the like your rise was. Oh, Tim is the pastor. 
that is transitioning into podcasting. Mm, mm -hmm. And he's going to kind of be this bridge, right? This trickle feed, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And in that, it will, it, 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 it kind of becomes like the best of both worlds. Yeah. Where the expectations were not always indicative of the freedom it seems like that you found as a podcaster because you're not necessarily held to the same standards Correct. as a podcaster. Correct. Right. And so I think that was like the expectation. It was like, oh man, like, yes, like mm -hmm. he gets it. Mm -hmm. And then when you kind of started expressing yourself in ways that people found inappropriate yep. or, or fill in the blank, I think that's when people were like, whoa, wait a minute. We're yeah. on. And an unfortunate part about it is people can't allow someone to just be wrong. Mm. Like, okay, what if, what if Tim's just wrong on this? Mm -hmm. I've been wrong about stuff. <laughs> what if Tim's wrong they about this? Their mamas is wrong. Their right. daddies is right. wrong. They and, and brothers like is wrong. They discarding you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they, it's like rather like it's an all or nothing binary thinking. That, you know what I mean? Because they can't hold tension. Yeah. That's that. Yeah. That's what it comes back down yeah. to. Yeah. And I remember, so I we, we talked about this privately, but I remember right before you came on my pod 14 months ago, mm -hmm. my wife brought the uh stripper yep. sermon to me yep. and she was like we were driving up somewhere and she's like hey you should listen to this because i think you might want to bring this up to him and, and give him an opportunity to clear it all up because mm -hmm. this is probably gonna go mm -hmm. and i was like no one's gonna do that <laughs> right. <laughs> it's right right gonna right. be fine right right and right. i listened to it and i and, and 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 this will probably get me dragged but i really like the talk yeah. like that talk was for me yeah yeah what sure. you talked about in that talk yeah people might say all oh, kind of you know little to prosperity or whatever that yep. talk was for me like that yep. talk and i love the talk and yeah. so in context of the talk i was like ah yeah i can see how some people have an issue with it you know and i didn't bring it up yeah i didn't bring it up i was like i'm not gonna bring it up and, and then, then like it, and the then it week blew. after it blew, it and blew. I, I had to call you and apologize yeah yeah because yeah. i said my wife my wife never never that's the one time she's given me input on content yeah she never gives me input on content that's the yeah. one time she's like hey i know he's coming you might want to bring this up and give him a shot to clear yeah. this up. Yeah. And I and I didn't listen to her. Yeah. And then it went viral. And I was like, man, we could have avoided some of that by just you talking about it on someone else's platform. But you know what? And, clear, and, and, and at we, least giving your context for it. We wouldn't have we wouldn't have avoided anything. You don't think so? No. You don't think if you don't think if you if we had a clip preemptively yep. addressing mm -mm. that Jesus is a stripper. No, they cause they because they don't like my answer. Mm. Right? So even when I have explained it. They don't like it. Mm. Now, here's what I just discovered like earlier this week. What I discovered earlier this week was because that's the only thing on my record. Mm. 28 years. Mm -hmm. At, from the pulpit. From the pulpit. Okay. It's the only thing on my record. Mm -hmm. There's no string of mm -hmm. clips that people are like, and this one, mm -hmm. and this one. Here he called him a stripper, and here he called yeah. him a hoe. And he, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's just not. So that's the blemish on my record, right? Mm -hmm. And. Uh, and some people would, um, we get comments from time to time. It's like, why do you keep bringing that up? It's over. It must still be bothering you, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like. Oh, by the way, just for the record, I'm bringing this up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. As a, as a means to say, I felt like I wasn't a good friend to you and not allowing you to preemptively address right, right, it. Right, 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 right. And, and, I, and I think And I didn't even have, know to think about that. Yeah, I think it would have, it, it may have mitigated some of the backlash. There's yep. going to be people that just don't like you because they don't like you. Right, they don't like the sure. stream of theology. Yep. They don't like who you're affiliated with. Right. That's different. We're not going to win those people yep. over. But the people that are kind of like, well, what did I he like, mean? I like Tim. What yeah, did yeah, he mean? Exactly. Let's yeah, get some yeah, clarity. Yeah. I think yeah. there are people like that yeah. that I just felt like I could have been a better uh, curator right. to help do that and i didn't do that and i felt i felt awful like i was you like did. man and i appreciate the, the call that you made and the conversation we had was beautiful yeah. I, I i appreciated it here's what i found out mm -hmm. i had an aha moment this week around this subject mm -hmm. and it was i it triggered me because not not that people disagreed with what I said or, or it was the people that dehumanized me mm -hmm. as a result of that comment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've, I have been dehumanized before and it was around my life mm -hmm. when a family member turned on the gang mm -hmm. that he was affiliated with. And if they didn't find him, mm -hmm. they were going Mm -hmm. put me and my younger brother's lights out. Mm -hmm. And we actually heard a conversation mm. 
we were over our friend's house. I won't name him. We're playing video games. We're teenagers, bro. We're, we're over at my homie's grandmother's house playing video games. We hear some people out in the in the front yard of my, my homie's grandmother's house. Mm-hmm. And it, it, you know how you can pick up the vibe of a kind of like, well, somebody must be angry or something. You know what I mean? It wasn't just loud talking. Mm-hmm. It started kind of getting heated exchange. So we pause. We we go to the, you know, in Cali, the windows open like this, mm-hmm. right? So we open up the window and we're listening. They're arguing about me and my brother's life. Oof. One of the OGs from the set yeah. was was arguing with these BGs mm-hmm. and they were like, these niggas is here right now, cuz let's just get them now. We got them. Like, this is it. Da, da, da. We've been trying to find woo, woo, woo. We can't find them, nigga. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's up. But they, they didn't have that ver- verbiage back then, but the equivalent of like, it's up. It, like, we got to get them. Da, da, da. And only because the OG was like, nah, cuz mm-hmm. today ain't the day, nigga. Mm-hmm. Ain't none of this go. They talking about our life mm-hmm. like it was, do you want turkey on that sub? <sighs> yeah. Or do you want <laughs> yeah. Yeah. chicken Alfredo, right? Uh-huh. So that was like. Hearing somebody talk about you that way. Whoa. Yeah. It was so dehumanizing. I was like, these niggas talking about us like if they go on the Isle of Guard or if they go on the Outback. Mm. It's just the craziest thing. So I got a gun after that. Mm. And I'm like, next, I had made up in my mind, inner vow, mm-hmm. never told nobody. My boy got me a 45. Said next nigga rolls up on me asking me about this family member. I'm popping him. Mm. Ain't gonna be no, yeah, nope, getting popped. Mm. It was just boom. Sixty days later, my parents, without ever putting a for sale sign in front of the house, had moved. Mm. Unbeen, they didn't even know about the situation that was going down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I know God spared me. Probably would have had a prison record. It, it would. I'd have been dead, or somebody would have been dead, and it would have been bad. I never made the association. Why does this one thing bother me so bad? Mm-hmm. What is it about this mm-hmm. that bothers me so bad? Mm-hmm. Do do am I bothered that they didn't like it? No, I'm not bothered. Am I bothered that they disagree with the way I described that whole situation? No, mm-hmm. I'm not bothered by that. It's the dehumanization. He's not who he says he is. He's now something a little bit less. Mm. He's actually a false teacher. Mm. They don't have a compilation mm-hmm. to line up to say mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. theologically here, 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 here. He he's he's out of bounds. Seven years of pastor and nobody's going back to pull up the files. Yeah. That ninety second clip and a bleeped cuss word is he's a false mm-hmm. prophet. He's a false teacher, and now he's less than mm-hmm. a man. Well, when you make when you dehumanize somebody, it's easier to take shots at them. Mm. Yeah. When you dehumanize somebody, it's easier to build a narrative of cancellation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And not just like goodbye, but good riddance. Wow. Like we would be better if you weren't here mm-hmm. on earth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that felt like that felt like that. That felt like that. Yeah. And that's why it's lingered. So I'm like, like so it, like I said, this is literally like four, yeah. three, three. Well, today is only Wednesday. So this was Monday. Yeah. This is yeah. two days ago. Was there any aspect of that making you want to pull back from being as public and open? No, it made me want to go. It made me want to pull up. Down, pull up, yeah. Like it wasn't even about like, now I'm going to describe mm-hmm. how I think he stripped. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't that. It was like, where is where are you at though? Yeah. Like it pulled up that same 45, which I'm in Texas. I got guns. Mm-hmm. So, and I can... We can stop by as many charges as we need to in that Tesla <laughs> to get to wherever we need to go. But like yeah. it, it, it put me on that same mindset of like, let's that's just heavy, pull man. up, pop yeah. the trunk and and yeah. get busy. And that's that's when I had to learn like I th- the crucifixion of my flesh 23 into 24 yeah. was a big deal because I did not have permission. Mm. The Holy Spirit would not. And I'm not going to. As many people, oh, he don't, he he can't be saved. And da, da, da. The Holy Spirit is the reason why some of these niggas is living. Mm. It was like that. It was that real. It was that real for me, because some of the stuff that was said wasn't just like on some. 
I disagree with that. That was in poor taste. Yeah, yeah. It was like if I see him, he it was like he needs to be slapped. Whoa, I didn't catch any of that. Yeah. There was, there was other creators that said that? Yeah. Wow. Like looking in a camera. And so I'm like, nigga, that house look like it's... Oh, man. That look like a Gary, Indiana oh, that's, house. That's, Let me... That's dark. <laughs> that's heavy. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the way that thing is tilted, if you pan out a little yeah. bit, maybe yeah. I can see the reflection of a street sign in the window. Like, yeah. like I'm... Sure. Was was there any aspect of the, the, the follow? Because I don't... I think the timeline was that... Then the follow up was there was some the, the the edited cuss word, but then there were some appearances on some other podcasts that had some language, some yeah. explicit language. Was there in well, the well, you do okay? So so for the record, because I kept count, um, four times have I used strong language okay. on pods, right? Uh huh. Four times. The way it's looped. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm Tim Chappelle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you think, I just need to pull out a vape or a yeah, cigarette or a and be cigar. like Ruslan, a cigar, <laughs> Ruslan. Yeah. <laughs> did you in some of the feedback around the language bit? Did you feel like any of that had a point, or there was like, oh, okay, that's actually a reasonable take on why they disagree with me on this? Well, yes and no. Okay. Um, I reserve the right on my couch to use the strongest language for my strongest emotions. Mm -hmm. I don't have, I, it's not a, a gratuitous every other word. Sure. But if we get into certain situations and we talk about stuff, if I think about the atrocities of your own historical arc, mm -hmm. right? And the war in our, the, the Armenian war. And mm -hmm. if you start telling me about that stuff, as an empath, I I might say, hey, bro, that's effed up. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what you're telling me is effed up. Mm -hmm. Like, the fact that your circumcised penis mm -hmm. is what got you out of death, mm -hmm. right? Or uncircumcised. I can't remember which one it was. Uncircumcised and circumcised. Right, right. So, right, like, yeah. whatever go, it was. Go back and hear the first podcast. Yeah, for yeah, the you, exactly. <laughs> we, this ain't getting clipped, right? Yeah. Um, but, but, like, I could say egregious, I could say deplorable, I yeah. could use all types of words, sure. and like, effed up is the super soaker mm -hmm. of how I feel about all of that, right? Mm -hmm. That's not every other word that's coming out of my mouth, mm -hmm. but it's in it's in the lexicon, mm -hmm. and I have no conviction using it, mm -hmm. zero. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was a situation where once my friends, I didn't care about what the general public was saying, but once my friends who are also pastors were like, hey, bro, I got people coming up to welcome, mm -hmm. uh, you know, visitors or, or church members, but they're asking me about your pod and mm -hmm. the fact that you said this word and they listen to you. I was like, bro, it ain't that serious. I'm not evangelizing cuss words. And I cuss mm -hmm. sometimes. But you don't want to be known as the, the, ap the apologist for using yeah, Christians I'm, using uh, profanity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm not out here like yeah. like um you know when when I remember when uh and this is this is not an apples to apples comparison, but I'll never forget when when Carlton Pearson um may God rest his soul uh when he uh went universal. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Universal. He was on the cover of uh, one like one of those magazines. Charisma or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I yeah. I was Ministry new today. to the faith. Bro. Yeah, yeah. So when he did that, that was that came out of nowhere, right? Mm -hmm. And he was he's the, he was the darling of ORU, mm -hmm. mentored by Oral Roberts, mm -hmm. right? Not a professor at Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts was his mentor, right? Mm -hmm. And bro, he was going to the College of Bishops with like a wagon full of books and papers to like prove his point on why like like it, this is a departure from the like very tenets of the faith mm -hmm. oh i'm about to do that with no cuss word mm -hmm. yeah so i came back on and was like hey i've talked to a couple of my friends i'm not gonna use them on the air no more mm -hmm. like and they was like oh we still don't we still don't accept that because you need to repent. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, I, this was not at the same time. I wish it was at the same time. But what I've what I've grown to say is I will watch my mouth when you watch your life. <laughs> How about that? 
You talking about the audience? Yeah. Yeah. When, when you watch your wife, when you watch your life, some of y'all need to watch your wife. But when you watch your life, then I'll, I'll I'll watch my mouth when you watch your life. And I don't know what y'all was gonna say about. I'm not comparing myself. Uh, but if I mean, Isaiah was walking around butt naked, trying to get somebody's attention. Yeah. Right. Like. Yeah. And 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 it sounds like when you correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like when you're talking about language. And this is not an endorsement or or a denial of it, but it sounds like when you're talking about language, from your perspective of dealing with humanity, yes. that there are there's a time and a place where certain language may be appropriate, absolutely, in a specific context, absolutely correct, that may not be appropriate for the broader Christian community, absolutely correct, because nobody's ever heard any of these yeah. words in the pulpit. Yeah. Yes, go it, back and pull the right, foul. Right, Twenty eight right. years of preaching, yeah. go find anywhere that I came close, yeah. never happened. It's never been sensational. It's a sacred desk. So that's the state of the union to the yeah. brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. Yeah. But I'm on my damn couch. Yeah. yeah. What do you want from me? Yeah. Because you're sourcing it. Like, like, yes, your couch is different than the pulpit. Yes. The conversation about a specific topic is different than Tim Ross is presenting the gospel. That's absolutely correct. And I think that's difficult for people to 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 nuance that. I think I think it could be tr tricky because. Again, the, the expectation, or some people's expectations, was Tim is going to be this like blameless rep representative that we wanted, right? And I, I, I sorely disappointed him. Yeah, and and you know, some as of that result, was probably in that was the disappointment. Yeah, yeah, and you know? and, and I and I grieved and accepted the disappointment that mm. I gave people, and I realized there was no way because this is. There was no way I could actually apologize for it because this is what he asked for. That Again, wisdom is proven to be right by its results. So if the Lord didn't tell me, then the fruit will bear that. Mm -hmm. But I think we have enough fruit to bear that maybe he did. Let's just consider that maybe he did. In, w in which instance? I'm just talking about the the the, the whole two years, Got right? It. Okay. The, 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 the instruction I got was the same way you have mentored and discipled people in private is the way I need you to talk publicly. Yeah, yeah. My response, I'm about to get canceled. Mm. He said, go ahead and get canceled. Mm. And in some ways I did. Mm -hmm. And then in other ways, I was, I was opened up to this world of people. So in the same way you you were given, like where did these kind of, mm -hmm. No, that's a fact. Q A non, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of in, in your world, it would be the 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 Joe Buttons and the, exactly. and, and those folks who exactly. are playing your clips. He that's pulling right. up your clips and yeah. putting his phone to the mic and playing your stuff. Yeah, and there's a yeah there's a level of of connection there. And I don't, I don't want to say it's because of the language, but I think it's it is in a way you speak frankly. That's, yeah, that's that's culturally connected to absolutely those aspects. And, and if the and if this was if I'm learning Spanish right now. And and there's there's a there's a grammatically correct Spanish that is um, proper and uh, distinct, and everyone's going to be able to understand it. And then there is a colloquial Spanish that is indigenous to everybody's country and everybody's city. In, in some in some cases, mm -hmm. cities mm -hmm. um, uh, in in Medellin. There's a few idioms that don't even mm -hmm. exist in Bogota, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm learning those. And when when I'm with Colombians and I say, que chévere, mm -hmm. <gasps> it's like a, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Pero cuando um, estoy hablando en España, yo digo... Why? Es muy why. Mm -hmm. <gasps> They're like, oh, you're one of us, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. off the language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yes, a bunch of athletes. I, I got the attention of athletes and strippers and OnlyFans models and and ball players and all these people that are like, you got my attention, can you pray for me? Mm. You got my attention, my marriage is in trouble. Mm -hmm. You got my attention, and they didn't even say you got my attention, but I got the attention, mm -hmm. right? And then they found out, oh, this dude gave me a Bible verse. Mm. I didn't give them like more of the whatever hooked them, hooked them. And then, and you're great at hooks. So you know what a hook, mm -hmm. a, a, a good hook can do, right? Um, 
And we're, we're trying to get people to Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure there, we love the story of the juxtaposition of like the old priest that goes into a prison and with his collar on goes, young man, you can be something. And the hardened criminal is like, oh my God, father, thank you. I can be somebody. And then you got jokers that used to be in prison that go back to prisons Mm -hmm. and they're like, yeah, Mm. you want us. Mm. That's the cadence I'm familiar with. Got it. You get this. Do you think your trajectory would have been the same had you remained a local church pastor? Oh, absolutely not. Okay. Yeah, no. Why is that? Because um, as a pastor... Again, I I take the pulpit very, very seriously and ministry very, very seriously. I had 32,000 followers Mm -hmm. prior to starting this pod. I thought that was amazing. That's like a small town. Like I've never, I'm not a numbers guy. I mean, I don't know. I I had to come to you to try to figure out what these metrics meant. You know what I mean? Um, I was never going to have a church of 30,000 because even even the gospel I preach was a eat his flesh, drink his blood, pick up your cross. That that message ain't gonna get no thirty thirty thousand people ain't gonna listen to that message. Mm-hmm. Thirty, you ain't gonna get a hundred thousand people to clip that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I was just content being the, like the preacher that like was I was the preacher's preacher, mm-hmm. right? Like uh, the preachers love the teacher loved the teach like like I love doing that. Um, but I always talk like this when I got home. <laughs> like, yeah. It was never gonna come out. And was the was the I don't want to say course correction, but the 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 I'm gonna pull back publicly because you are people's overseer, an apostolic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just I was like, yeah, I'm not because it's not a big difference to me. Like the there's not a huge difference between like if you're a pastor or if you're a overseer, a Correct. pastor. It's just the same thing. If anything, did, there's more responsibility in the latter. Yeah, I, I just was like, you know what? If I, I understand how inflammatory the F word can be, mm-hmm. which is why I chose to use it with the topic we were covering at the time. Yeah. I want, I, I, I'm incensed by this. Mm-hmm. So this word, yes, it, it carries the, the, the strength of the feeling that I have mm-hmm. talking about w- what we were talking about. Also... This is the way they talk in London. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. In the pulpit. In London? Oh, my God. Hey, my friend was at a church, and this is just in Europe, period, now. But in, in London, they, they we was at, uh, I won't say what church or nothing, because I don't want nobody to feel away. But, yeah, this one dude got up, and he casually drop the f word and <laughs> and the s word and the only people that were doing like this were the americans mm. and it wasn't and it wasn't me it was white evangelical conservative americans that were like oh my oh my god and you know a couple of the um british people were trying to lean over like yeah it's just so and so it's just how he is but nobody was like <gasps> like there wasn't a gasp they were like uh, he was dropping f word yeah, he. Oh wow. He, yeah, yeah, and, and the S word. Yeah, yeah. And you're not you're not co-signing that. You're just saying. No, I'm okay. I, I, <laughs> I would never. Yeah. In that setting, sure. I can't do that. Sure. But over there, yeah. it's just different, right? Uh, my friend preached at a church in Scotland, and um, he's a great preacher. And as soon as he handed the mic back to the lead pastor, the lead pastor said, everybody, "Come on, everybody, wasn't that?" Let's give so and so a hand. That message was effing incredible in that in in the Scottish accent, because <laughs> oh in Scotland that's every this other word. So foreign, man. right? That's crazy. It's like that message is effing incredible. And a, a like an hour later, he had a pint of Guinness in front of him. Mm-hmm. This is like a yeah. a denominational kid. He's in shock. Mm-hmm. Like, you want me to drink Guinness, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. And the guy's like, yes, you, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, we just, I mean, we just had the. Uh, Pints with Aquinas cigar, Chesterton cigar lounge vlog. And that'll, that's definitely going to upset people. Yeah. Right. Cause everybody, they're going to be, but, but dude, how many, how, how many pastors enjoy an old fashioned and a cigar yeah. and they can never post it because yeah. half their church will leave. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not, again, I, I'm not trying to be this revolutionary sure, guy sure. that's like, like I'm not, not trying to, it doesn't I'm make not, sense to die on that hill. 
it it, it doesn't make sense yeah. to die on that hill. And it also equally doesn't make sense for you to die on it as well. Like uh -huh. that goes both ways. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I like, agree. Like I mean, you 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 saw me in some of these comment section. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? exactly. <laughs> like, yes, I do remember. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, it's yeah. documented. Yeah. But I'm like, um, and 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 people have said the whole like, well, why don't you uh, like? But, but you could be a stumbling block. Mm -hmm. Person to person, mm -hmm. I, I'm big on don't be a stumbling block. Mm -hmm. In the world wide web. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if I if I give date myself with my age, un politely unfollow. Yeah. Well, I think people don't stumble over yourself. That that passage definitely gets used to, I would say, spiritually manipulate people. It's fragile. We use yeah. it. We, we we actually people actually use it to fragilize themselves. Yeah. I'm. I can't be the best Christian I can be if you don't watch your mouth. That's I think, wild, I, I fam. Think the worst version of that is when they create a hypothetical of someone somewhere. <laughs> it's not even them. It's not. They can hear you. Oh, yo, yo, they yo, can yo. hear you say something. But it's the there's someone somewhere <laughs> that will be caused to go back to math. And, and can I get <laughs> if they hear you have you heard they heard Pastor Tim Ross will have a a, a pint of Guinness and a cigar, and they will go back to meth. Egg. <laughs> Dude, meth is crazy. No, but it's Yo, but it's the, it's, it's so true. It's bro. the hypothetical. That's the one that bugs me. And I just always tell people. And I, a pastor a long time ago told me this. He said knowledge of someone's liberty is not the same as causing someone to stumble. Absolutely correct. If Absolutely I have correct. knowledge, yes, that you have a glass of wine with your wife, yeah. But my mom's an alcoholic, therefore I don't drink. Yeah. Knowledge of that doesn't cause me to stumble. I agree. If I had an issue with alcohol right. and I knew that you have a glass of wine or two with your wife, that doesn't cause me to yeah, stumble. Yeah, absolutely correct. If I have an issue with alcohol and I come over to your house and you're offering me the wine. Ding, 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 right? ding, ding. That is the the causing somebody to stumble. Absolutely but, correct. You know? Absolutely correct. So. We we had somebody in uh uh on a live one night um that was in the comment section he was he was demonstratively to his own detriment trying to prove the point that you just made mm -hmm. where he's in there like i'm i'm really struggling in you my cuz <laughs> i just think these, <laughs> well, cause you just, i just think, I think they're else. peckers <laughs> bro i think they're peckers that's not what i was thinking about they they <laughs> they just do this on the keys and they're probably on their phone. I'm just so old school. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I just think they're pecking on their... And they're like, Tim, I my conscience is violated because now that yeah. Tim Ross cussed, I decided I'm going to cuss, but now my, my brain hurts because I shouldn't do it. Yeah. But Tim won't stop, so I won't stop. And so now will he stop? And I was like... Yeah. And, and our community is very kind. Sure. And we were like, hey, dude, just kind of focus. This is he talking about. Yeah, he's talking about something totally different right now. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's dad died yeah. and he's trying to walk him through yeah. it. And you in the comment section, this is a distraction. And Yeah, I, th I think the, the, the flip side to that is there's also, there's, there's, there, should be, there should be wisdom. And it sounds like that's what you're exhibiting to not flaunt our liberty. And I don't flaunt yeah, it. Yeah. Four times ain't flaunting, dog. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. I think it was that the, can't be. the doubling down on your your reasons for why yeah i think that's what was the that, not that you were flaunting it but i think that's how people took it but i think the tension i live in is hey there are certain things that i'm not going to post on social media yeah just because i know it will be unhelpful right 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 i don't want to distract from yeah that, for sure you know yeah and i think that is more so it's, it's less about me being afraid or thinking i'm wrong it's yeah. more so it's like i just don't want to Y'all don't need to know what I drive. Yeah. Y'all don't need to know where I, I live. I don't do none of that. You know what I mean? I yeah. just I'm just not gonna go. They don't there. need to see my vacation. Yeah, you don't need to see yeah. my vacation. You you don't you don't need to see that stuff. Yeah. You know? And so I think there's a there's there's a there's a tension there. The flip side to that is though, what what aspects do we need to highlight more? Yeah. So people can see them. I'm not talking about uh, liberties at this point. I'm talking yeah. about just in general that can inspire people to yeah. a healthy pursuit you know so so like tim was able tim ross was able to build a podcast 
while transitioning from ministry and by golly, he's all doing, without scandal, all without scandal. Yeah. He's doing well. His marriage is healthy. His yeah. kids love Jesus. Yeah. We need to see more of that. Yeah, absolutely. You know I mean? Absolutely. And I think that's the, that's the, the, there's a tension there. Yeah. You know, I, I want that to be like, for, for me, I want people to see a fully integrated person mm -hmm. who may not be perfect, but you're like, you know what? I don't like that about him, but I rock with that dude. Cause mm -hmm. at least I know what I'm getting. Yeah. I like I'll, I'll I'll keep it a buck with you. Um the the 2016 election mm -hmm. what it came down for me was like who who showed me their cards? Mm. It was like I just want to know whose cards is on the table. In terms of what? In terms of everything. Mm. Right? Like Trump and Hillary was there and I was just like who's showing me everything? Mm -hmm. This nigga Trump told me who he was. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Unapologetically. Whether, uh, he told me, so whether you like him or not, at least I know. Mm -hmm. I can respect that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I was like, what is Hillary doing? Mm -hmm. What you doing over there? Mm -hmm. Where are them emails at? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was like, I was just trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And like, nope, people are too scared to admit stuff like that. But like, I'm from the street. So I would just rather you come up to me and be like, yeah, nigga, I don't like you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, yeah. cool. If I ever see you on my block, nigga, mm -hmm. it's on site. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now, I either want that smoke, or guess what? I politely take myself around <laughs> your block. Because at least you told me. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You kind of told me what the terms and conditions yep, were. Yep. But that's what, you know, I make this statement, like, I'll watch my life when you watch your mouth. Or I'll watch my mouth when you watch your life. But I'm like, okay, y'all tripping over what I said over here, but you still defending a pastor that has a whole side chick and baby mama mm. while still being married. Mm -hmm. And it's like everybody falls. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> My mouth, that life, you, this, and this is what you want to talk about? Yeah. That's a crazy, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, like. You, you, you up on stuff I'm not up on. That's crazy to me. Yeah. I just, I just, so uh, that sounds preposterous. I just got hip to, I don't know if we ever talked about this. I just got hip to, the, I think we talked, did we talk about this? I didn't. I didn't realize, and it's really dark. There's church prostitutes. Oh, for sure. That get passed around pastors. Absolutely. That's a different level, man. Yeah. That's. The, I'm not one on like Christians have a bunch of demons, but when you're doing that, oh no, you that, opening yourself up to some demons. There, if a, you are, if you are sanctified, know Jesus, know His ways, and then you're intentionally going in and practicing sin like that, like sexual immorality of that proportion, I think you're opening up yourself to some serious demonic activity. I would love for like the Diddy stuff to simply be on the secular side of things. Mm. And like the church stuff is like false teaching and mm -hmm. you know what I mean? A, a defense of the faith. There is a Christian version of the Illuminati. Mm. Darkness. There, there, There's a Christian, the sexual perversion is pervasive for a reason. Oof. And it's not just in this country I won't name the country, but there's a country I've been invited to several times. I'm not going. Mm. Um, You're going to have to tell me the country off. Yeah, I'll tell you. <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you. Uh, Remind me to ask him, please. I'll, I'll actually tell you two countries, uh -huh. but the um, part of the honorarium mm -hmm. is a woman. Oh. And they bad. Yikes. Like, wow. They're sending you. They're sending you a baddie. Oh, my gosh. And it's like, we honor you. We honor your time. It's just this convoluted. Is it, is it like on some like like part polygamy type stuff? Like a man no, can be entitled to multiple women type stuff? No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's on some straight sexual. This is just, we honor you, so we're giving you this much money. And... <sighs> Gosh, man, she, that's heavy. She's here for you. Oh my gosh! And so, yeah, it's in this country and in some in in a lot of other countries, and so I'm trying to tell people to be vigilant on some real dark. And again, I'm from the street, mm -hmm. right? So we deal with thugs and hoes mm -hmm. all the time. I got into the church, and I'm I still had to deal with thugs and hoes. Mm -hmm. So that's my reality. Mm -hmm. So I can only come from what my reality is. If you didn't come from this reality then it sounds preposterous. And if you didn't come for where I come from, then the way I talk is crazy. Mm -hmm. But but nobody said nothing, yeah. Ruslan, to uh, the Duck Dynasty dudes when, when they popped off. Mm -hmm. Like they was in the, they, they was in the pulpit with camo on. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And Uncle Cy was saying, damn and hell, and duh, 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 and they was on Bravo. So they was watching the gay mm-hmm. commercial mm-hmm. every time yeah. Duck Dynasty went to break. Yeah. yeah and yeah. they went through, and they they somehow bounced their eyes and did something. Yeah. You know, when RuPaul's drag thing yeah. came up <laughs> so they could get back. And they couldn't wait to get them at the church and yeah. let them wear their little. Yeah. And, and they, I, they, they give they give uh, Jordan Peterson a pass, too. They give they Jordan, give, they P- give Jordan right, because of his intellectualism. Maybe it's the damn braids. Maybe. You know what I'm saying? Jordan Peterson was on my buddy Pints with Acquaintance pod, dropping the G, G, the GD right? back to back. And I ain't talking about, you yeah, know what I mean? exactly. Chicago. Like right, 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 right. <laughs> Bang, man. He had to keep editing it out. And yeah. I'm like, oof. And, you know, I'm not saying they, like, looked the other way. There was definitely Catholics that were, like, upset about yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. But they were they definitely, it was. It wasn't the, and maybe it's because they just view Duck Dynasty and Jordan Peterson categorically different as like Jesus curious, you know, and they see you more as like a leader. Yeah, that's a good thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, hold on. You got to tell me about this Christian Illuminati thing. (laughs) You got to, we're not going to brush over that. Huh? Hey, we we can, uh, we can definitely cut this part out if you don't want the story in, but I remember you shared a story one time where you were going to speak. And you had went into the room, and one of the ladies or a hostess followed you and offered. No, that wasn't me. This was oh, this was a this is a story story. about a person about a person experience. Yeah, yeah, that that experienced that. So and you and you can keep that in. That's fine. Can can I use the restroom? Of course you can. Sorry, (laughs) you can just go pee, and and I would just keep talking. talking. Yeah, because you got to tell me that we're 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 long. When I tell you we're long format here, we are long format here. So Ruslan just went to go pee. Okay. He's gone. Um, and so now you just get to hear me talking to myself while Hector plays the same beats. The same song uh, can you program anything else in there, bro? Uh, Are you excited for a comedy on Friday night, brother? I'm ex- I'm super Second excited. About, yeah, I'm super excited. Oh, this is coming out this Friday, so... Uh, it doesn't matter. Show tonight, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it, whenever it comes out, I'm... I'm all good with it. But yeah, no, I'm I'm super excited about it. I already built my set, all that. But um Ruslan wants to talk about Christian Illuminati. He wants to talk about it. And uh <laughs> we are we can talk about it. Cause it's it's an actual thing, bro. It's an actual thing that people people need to be put up on. Because you can get caught up in it and not know. Just like the Biebers of the world and the Ushers of the world and all these people that wound up, the Bow Wows and, and whatever whatever all these people have done, um, nobody gets in into show business to get turned out. Also, ambitions are so high and 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 um uh aspirations are so high that it can wind up happening. So I and, and and the same happens in church, bro. People people aspire to be put on so bad. They aspire to be put on so bad that they will compromise their inter- and if you already got a flimsy faith, yeah. it don't take much. It don't take much. You know what I'm saying? If you like got saved but you still kind of a freak if you got saved and you still kind of like to party, you one, one carrot. Yeah, right, right. If you got saved and you still real carnal, then it's not a it's not a you not on a level you're not on a level playing field anyway, right? Like like you're already on a, a decline and all somebody has to do is squirt some baby oil and you about to slide straight oh, down. Tim, I would just like to say before you guys go back in, uh I've never heard anyone say Christian Illuminati. And now you got uh, we got a target on our back now. Thanks, man. Love you. It, there is, <sighs> like, like whatever the Illuminati is, there's a Christian version. Of it. B- bottom line, so Illuminati is usually what like pu- people ca- cabal puppeteering. Yeah, but you but know, not behind just, the scenes. Yeah, there's a power the show. Yeah, yeah, power struggle and the whole thing. But but what keeps them in it, right? What gets people in it and keeps them in it is that we all got dirt on each other. Oof. We all got dirt on each mm. other. Sean Combs is not the originator mm-hmm. of this play. Mm. He's not the first one to do it. I was talking to a, a guy earlier. He's going through a situation. Mm-hmm. And 
um, I was like, hey, bro, let, let me remind you. You know how you know how the pe people that are really submitted to the Holy Spirit, they produce the same type of fruit. Mm -hmm. Like it won't you can get all four of us in here. And if we're really being led by the spirit, we're going to produce the fruit of the spirit. And then you're going to be able to like, oh, dude is nice and mm -hmm. has self-control and kind and mm -hmm. long suffering. OK, patient. Oh, OK, cool. All right. Well, then you see like a person that's that's a manipulator and a narcissist and well, you can line up four of those and you can say, what was your experience with this person? Oh, it was like this. My leadership did me like this. Well, my leader did the same thing. Mm. My leader did the same thing. My leader did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, they're being led by a spirit too. Mm. Like, like, like Paul doesn't have a comprehensive list, mm -hmm. but, but he does have a list where he's like, now the works of the flesh are these mm -hmm. rot, but the fruit of the spirit is this mm -hmm. right and so you you see these people and that's what we were talking about before you reset we see these people that nobody gets into ministry to like embarrass themselves and sure. shame shame god shame the church yep, yep. their wives their children mm -hmm. their husbands whatever whatever the configuration is and if there's a little bit of compromise if the discipleship wasn't tight and you're more into this person than you are anchored into scripture and jesus then this person can turn you and you will be doing it out of honor you'll be doing it out of i'm submitted to the house mm. i kind of felt away but everybody else was doing it and mm. so i just thought it was normal and so i just went with it and mm. I thought he did this with everybody. And before you know it, you in the spin cycle. Mm. Like, I don't think people are like setting their watches like, I'm about to fornicate mm -hmm. and live the most lascivious lifestyle of all time. First of all, most people can't spell lascivious, number one. Number two, this is not how it works. Mm -hmm. it's, this, it's this subtle ebb and flow. Mm. It's the hug that lingers too long. Mm. It's the... It's the Hey, I, 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 I'm struggling with this. Like, oh, bro, you good, man. Mm. You good. We all got struggles. Mm. Just, Someone's coming to confess sin, and they're being told that it's okay. And then that's kept in the back And then, as it, a then you're de desensitized and you more, and then you're invited into a, a, another room, mm. right? There was the Diddy party, then there was the Diddy party, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's always making the distinction between I was at the party, I wasn't at the freak off. Why is they saying that? Because mm -hmm. there's a difference. Mm. I posted something on on uh, threads uh, a, a couple of weeks back where I said um, a lot of the convocations and conventions that the church people were going to, those were, th those were freak offs too. I you think just, I, I think I saw that. You yeah. just didn't get invited to the freak off portion. Like you went to the all night prayer meeting, yeah. but you didn't. You wasn't. You didn't get to participate in the all night train. Ooh. The, 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 like, bro, this yeah. is real. Yeah. This is real stuff. Oh man. So so it's 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 a it's a very. But you, you know what's going to happen though, Tim, is people are then going to start doing a mental Rolodex of the ministries you're affiliated with. I don't care. And start asking if it's this one or if it's that one. Do I don't you, care. Do you want to set clear the air on saying, no, it's not any of them? No, I, I'm, it's up, nigga. Like, it's, it is what it is. <laughs> Yo! Oh, oh, oh no! No! It, no, I'm, I'm just saying, I've been in ministry for 28 no, years. No, I know, I know, I know. And I haven't just been at yeah, but four you, churches. Yes. I've been around. Okay, but what I'm saying is the four the, the handful of churches that people know you to be affiliated with are are higher profile churches. Yes. So then they're gonna piece, they're gonna start piecing together. Well, is it Parter's house? Is it this church? I, is I, it I, gateway? Yes, yeah, gateway. Is it God's way of holding this fellowship? Yeah. yeah. So th that, that's that's what I'm saying. Well, all I can say is. So I'm saying if you want to set the clear the air and say no, it wasn't at these churches that I've been on staff at. Like it might we might want to do that. Oh well, I what I can say is. When I was at Potter's house, okay. I didn't have to worry about a freak off. Okay. When I was at Gateway, I didn't have to worry about a freak off. Okay. Right? You see this? This is me this is me doing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but if 30,000 people go to your church, there's bound to be some freaks. Mm. But you're you're saying that in this Christian Illuminati there are 
situations that you personally firsthand know of of things where there were the Christian correct. Freak, freak offs absolutely full correct. on absolutely correct oh and I gosh. and I got invited to some mm. and tested to see if I was a part and all that kind of stuff mm. yeah like my my first um uh the Cleveland love story have I told you about this okay so um uh I I go to a church in Cleveland and um I do I do I do comedy for the men's conference mm -hmm. and then I preach on Sunday. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is Saturday night. I'm in my hotel room chilling. I'm taking a nap. I get a call. Hey, I'm about to come get you at some time, 7 p.m., to take you to a uh, restaurant, which is pretty normal. Mm -hmm. You're hosted by the church, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's 7 p.m., okay. It might be 6.15. I'm like, absolutely, bro. 7 p.m. is fine. So... Then he says it again. Are you sure 7 p.m. is okay? I'm like, all right, I know I just woke up from a nap, but yes, I think I just made that clear. Mm -hmm. And then he, he goes, is your wife with you? I said, no, nah, man, it's just me. And, and another question, do you are you traveling with somebody, blah, blah, blah? I wasn't. It's like, no, it's just me. He was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. So you're cool if, I'm, if I come through at 7? Yes, bro. Like I'm like, yes. Mm -hmm. Then his whole voice changed. You know why I want to come through, right? I said, no. <laughs> Excuse me? He said, well, I want to come through and give you some of this Cleveland love. Oh. Exactly. Bro, my whole body got nauseous. Oh. My whole body got, it, I was so, this is my first encounter with this uh -huh. ever in life. Uh -huh. So I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> That's what I said. I, I I was so shocked. I just politely declined. Mm -mm. No, thank you. Mm -mm. And he said, Oh, man, you don't need nothing, not even a blowjob? Oh, he was, ooh. I said, nah, 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 dog, I'm good. Like, the first one was, like, little yeah. kid, innocent, and then, like, nah, nah, I'm I'm good, dog. Oh, I guess, I, I guess you, you must be getting out of that at home then with your wife or something. It's weird. And then he just hung up. Oh, my gosh. And then nobody came to pick me up. So, so, so my, my heart rate elevates mm. for, first, like five, the first 90 seconds to two minutes, I'm nauseous. Like, I feel like I need to throw up. Then because I, I have sexual trauma, mm -hmm. my heart rate elevates. Like I had just sprinted mm. against Usain Bolt. Mm -hmm. I, my, I mean, I can, I can feel my heart like in my neck mm. it was racing so fast and i was like my eight-year-old inside of my 20 something year old body was like you should have invited this nigga over and you could have took the steak knife that you had in room service and you could have killed him with it and Jeez. threw him into lake erie because like now like all it, it was it, it was a, a a crazy dysregulated that's heavy man situation so i called my wife i'm like let me tell you what just happened. She's like disgusted and repulsed. And then I'm like, when I get to the church tomorrow, I got to tell the pastor. So he don't, I don't know what, I don't know what these niggas doing out here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I get there and I'm like, Hey bro, this is what happened. And I just need you to be on notice. Mm. And he's like that foul spirit. Like, Oh my God, I can't believe that happened. Mm. I'm so sorry. And then I get inside the, the, the service and I started looking around. I was like, yeah, nah, these niggas gay. Mm. Y'all tried to, y'all tried to get me. 
Okay. Okay. Mm. Y'all tried to get me. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, um, I think it was a test. It was like I got invited to this different state, different city to see if I was on the DL. Because nobody saw nothing at in DFW. Uh-huh. So it's like maybe he, he'll play if he's out of Ugh. his home court or whatever. Because a, of, a lot of these dudes, they, they only married in the city uh, that they live in. Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. ring come off as soon as they get to Atlanta. The uh. ring come off as soon as they get to Cali. The ring come off as soon as they get to Australia. The ring come off. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So um, it's like. And you're saying this is this has happened multiple times. This sort of stuff. Oh, this stuff happens. This stuff is happening today. But I mean, for you, this has happened what a dozen times, more than a dozen times. No, that happened one time. That happened one time. But similar stuff where you've been similar, presented. Yeah, bro. Wow. Yeah, and that's why I, I won't know. go to certain countries. Yeah. Because the churches. This is how, and this is why I won't preach for everybody. Do Do you think there's a any sort of responsibility? Because like I think a lot of the stuff that people hear about the Diddy situation is like, I can't believe someone didn't say something earlier. Mm-hmm. I can't believe someone didn't try to expose it earlier. Yeah. Right. And then the only people that did, you know, the Jaguar rights or whoever, like they, they're saying all kinds of crazy stuff. So it's hard to decipher what's real from what's fiction. Yeah. Do you think there's any sort of responsibility to perhaps expose some of the stuff that's happening? The only people that can depower people and institutions that abuse power are people that have been victim of that of that power mm. the the third party person can't is not going to dethrone that mm. you have to be a first person mm. direct that's the reason why cassie got diddy because she's a first person wow right yeah all the all the people that's talking about uh, we got dirt on this person, this person. I, I got a third party that knows the, 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 somebody mm-hmm. close to me told me this is happening. Y'all can go screaming from the mountaintops. That person ain't going to come down mm-hmm. until the person that has been abused by that power speaks. Because that's the only way they get their power back. Mm-hmm. The reason why it takes so long um, for it to come out, it takes them that long to get their voice back. Mm. As a su- survivor of sexual abuse, mm-hmm. It was 11 years from the time I was abused to the time I said something about it. Mm-hmm. Took me that long to get my voice back. Mm-hmm. And then no matter what the truth is, life changes forever. Mm-hmm. You about to blow to whatever life was, mm-hmm. you are going to detonate that. Mm-hmm. And there's no going back, mm-hmm. right? You got to make a new city. You, you're not putting the same buildings back there, mm-hmm. right? If you if you blow up, if you go on uh, uh, accordion the, the Twin Towers, mm-hmm. You better have something else you ready to build Mm -hmm. because you ain't building those again, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people wind up in a chokehold permanently because they're like, I (sighs) let me just keep these two towers up. It ain't even worth it. Mm -hmm. People live here. People, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They they work here. They they love it here. They they met here. They have lunch here. They've romanticized this version of the narrative and I'll just live in silence. So then people wind up like me, I, I... you know, just porn and masturbation. Just keep myself numb to it. Mm. Somebody else drinks it up. Somebody else smokes it up. Somebody else sexes it up. Somebody else di- dives deep into work and never looks up again. They mm. take 300 dates in a 365-day calendar to go preach when they got a family and a wife and kids at home. Everybody's doing something. to either escape trauma, or run themselves from trauma, or run mm. from trauma, mm. distract themselves from it. All I'm saying is, I'm, and that's what we're try, what we try to do on this podcast is I'm trying to get people to get their voice back. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, go air this nigga out. Mm. I can, I can go stand with you. Mm -hmm. We got a whole community to support you. Mm -hmm. Once vulnerability becomes your superpower and you own your story, Mm -hmm. then you can go and be like, this is what happened to me. Mm. And we'll, we'll stand there with you. Mm -hmm. We had a, we had a young lady last week who found out on a Monday and we just happened this particular week to do lives on Monday and Tuesday. Mm -hmm. From the time we 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 ended between when we ended our live on Monday and came back on on Tuesday, she found out her brother was sexually abused by the elder of the church. Mm. 
And when we came back on Tuesday, she was like, oh, my God, I'm so good. I didn't even know y'all was going to be back on. How do I walk through this? Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. said, he got to go. Mm -hmm. And your brother, what your brother doesn't have to do is hide this, NDA this, take no money on this. Mm -hmm. This sick dude is a predator, mm -hmm. has, has infiltrated your family, because that's when predators strike, when everybody's defenses are down. Your brother holds the key to his accountability. So empower him, mm. make sure the support system is there. And yes, you're going to blow up the church. The whole church going to blow up, but you didn't blow it up. He did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> his actions blew that up. Not your confession. Well. Not you telling you doing the right thing. But how is it? Always the abuser is why would you mess people's life up like that? Yep. If you are, I mean, it's been 30 years. I mean, if you, if you live this long, you might as well just let it go now. Nah, I, cause I don't get my, I don't get my voice back until I take it from you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You've been holding it in your pocket, mm -hmm. profiting, going on with your life, dancing, squirting people with baby oil. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> with the baby oil. dude, a thousand is a lot. It's I've a only, lot. I've only mentioned it twice. Yeah. I got 998 more jokes <laughs> I could do. <laughs> So, um, but it's a slippery slope. <laughs> um, I I just, I, I'm trying to empower people yeah. so that they can. No, that's good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Get their yeah, voice yeah. back. But I'm, a third party cannot. Yeah. Like I can know, I know a lot of stuff about a lot of stuff because NDAs don't keep people from talking. Mm -hmm. It keeps them from talking publicly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, NDAs can also can't be used to pre prevent a, a, a crime. Like you Correct. can't. Can't say exactly. you signed this NDA. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You nah. know, I violated you right. in most <laughs> <laughs> illegal yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, you can't say nothing. No, nah, that's that, not that, what an NDA yeah, Exactly. Does. It supersedes that. Yeah. So, so I have I I am a I am a confidant to a lot of people. Mm. And uh I am a safe place. Mm -hmm. But nobody nobody's gonna hear nothing from me. Mm -hmm. And I empower people to go, hey, you hold the power. Mm -hmm. And when you're ready to push that button. I'll be right there with you. Mm, jeez, man. Yeah, it's it's it sucks, man. I, I guess I just tend to be more hopeful and a bit naive in that stuff ain't as bad as it sounds. Oh, it's it's dude, there's so much good. Here's the thing, because again, we we've been talking I think the theme of this thing is like tension yeah. and holding tension, yeah, right? Yeah. I love the church. Mm. There's some so some really good churches, some some dope churches and mm. That's who I participate. My mentor, mm -hmm. Jerome Lewis, been married to his wife forever. Got two beautiful kids and beautiful grandkids, and um, seeds of greatness church. That's where I tithe, and that's who can check me and Juliet and encourage us, correct us, exhort us, prophesy, all the things. And there's some churches that are just rank. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like. It's good to know both. Let me let me ask you this. I watched a video of one of the pastors. He was a pastor at Gateway. His is a CBN interview. And he's like a um, survivor specialist. And he was there for a couple of years, and he's moved on, and he's doing okay. survivors. And he had this point. It was in light of all the Gateway stuff, but he specifically had this point. He said, there is never a time when an affair happens in a pastor church member dynamic where there isn't some form of abuse in that situation because the power dynamic is so Absol disproportionate. Absolutely correct. That even if it's consensual yep. and even if uh no one's, you know, being assaulted, yeah. that that the, the just the sheer power disparity is enough to say no there's some degree of coercion and manipulation and technically it is I don't know if you would constituted sexual assault but 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 some it's like it's completely unethical and teetering on just flat out assault uh, well i in, agree in a sense. there's actually precedent in texas yeah. uh, for this because really? um there was a pastor that uh tried to um say that there there that all of the sexual activity he was having with these members was consensual mm -hmm. and the law the the judges the texas courts came back and said because of your position, mm -hmm. it wasn't just consensual. Mm. Your power dynamic acted as um, 
coercion mm -hmm. and and compromise to this person's judgment mm. because of the role that you were in. Wow. And and the, the the question I always ask is, if this nigga was a regional manager of a Domino's pizza, mm -hmm. would he still have the same pool? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, probably not. No, not probably. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, like, there's a couple, a couple of these guys are good looking and sure. could pull wherever they were. Right, yeah. a couple of them used to be athletes or whatever. The average dude, yeah. the little dorky nigga, like, don't nobody want him. It's <laughs> only because yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of this, I get to wield the power of charisma mm. in front of this captive audience, mm. and we all know that if I can't be with Elvis, I'll take somebody in the band. Mm -hmm. And if the pastor cannot appropriate that, if he's not or she's not uh, uh, disciplined enough to go, I see where your affection, I see what your affection is for me. Mm -hmm. You're my sister in Christ. Mm -hmm. You're my brother in Christ. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, their whole body relaxes. Like, I didn't know where to put this. Mm -hmm. I, I'm mm -hmm. drawn to you. Mm -hmm. I, um, uh, somebody uh, put in the chat the other day. Every time I wound up compromising and having sex, I just needed a hug. Mm, wow. This is a young lady that put that in the chat. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's the truth. Mm -hmm. It's like all, all a human being actually needs is a hug mm -hmm. that lasts more than like, I think, 12 seconds or 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. And the, and, and the, and the um, oxytocin is going to pop off mm -hmm. and, and create this bonding effect. But we don't actually think we can just get that. Mm. So we'll just open up our whole body <sighs> when we only needed the hug. Yeah. So we all go too far. Mm -hmm. So if the if the person in the position of authority mm -hmm. doesn't curtail that mm -hmm. and 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 shift that, then yeah, you're in that you're in that position. When I when I was a pastor all the way through my tenure, whether it was young adult, evangelist, I was sent free. I didn't wear not a drop of cologne mm -hmm. ever mm -hmm. until at, I didn't start wearing cologne again. I bought two of the most expensive bottles after I stepped down from being a lead pastor because mm -hmm. I had gone like 26 years sent free mm -hmm. for one reason and one reason only. I'm already attractive. There's an anointing on my life and I'm a damn good communicator. Mm -hmm. Adding a scent for what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want you to also know I smell good. <laughs> A scent is a is tied to memory. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And if you if you wire all that up, then it's like you dreaming about me. Yeah, that's whack. Yeah. I'm in love with Juliet. I don't want you. Blah blah blah. Yeah. You're my sister in the Lord. Yeah. I'm gonna talk about Juliet ad nauseum until you're like, I want what he got, as mm -hmm. opposed to I want who she got. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so so, but 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 that was always on me. Mm -hmm. I, I never had no situations where women were crawling all over me and I'm all, all always skirting the line. I didn't play none of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My body, I made women's bodies safe in my presence. Mm -hmm. I didn't sexualize them, mm -hmm. which is dehumanizing. Mm -hmm. I didn't sexualize my sisters in Christ. These are my sisters in Christ. And that's incestual and I'm not into incest. That's good. So like, y you gotta be discipled into that then you got to be Bibled into that. Mm -hmm. Then you got to have accountability that holds you to that. Yeah, yeah. And then you got to be honest about who you're attracted to. Because with all of that that I just said, there was three girls that I was attracted to. Mm -hmm. And once I realized it, I just made sure that there was distance because attraction is not planned. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, I always found it interesting when people would be like, man, it's like all these women in my DMs. Ew. Uh, I'm, you know, God, I'm just, God made me so good looking and that's why I keep struggling with these things. You know, they're not, they're not literally saying that, but that's kind of the, yeah. the thing. And I, I was like, hey, man, maybe we just got different crosses to bear, you know, like I, I don't, be, you know, and, and, and then like, as my, my audience and my platform grew, I don't have women in my DMs. No. I don't have women, like, uh -uh. I don't, and so I think to your point, like, I think there is a playing into it, communicating a subtle, oh, absolutely a correct. subtle whole energy for dudes. Oh, absolutely correct. You know, and absolutely then they correct. blame like they're good looking yeah, or yeah, like yeah. these girls and these yeah. women. And it's like, yeah. no, bro, you're just a you're just a weirdo. Yeah. And you're sending mixed signals. And yeah. You're being, you know, and that's what's confusing to someone that you said, like there's a they're they're mesmerized because you can speak to them right. in a very powerful way. You know, right. when we are when when we're talking about 
preaching. Mm-hmm. We believe that's the word of God. Mm-hmm. And it could very easily that you could stir someone yeah, for sure. to want to grow closer to God. And that could get very, but you also got to do extra stuff to communicate that you sort do. of energy. Yeah. And I've never, I mean, you know, my Instagram has been booming for a couple of years now. And bro, there's never been one weird interaction Mm-mm. ever. Mm-mm. So it's, it's just interesting that people say this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, I just thought that, you know, first of all, whole energy is like a great two words put together because the acronym is he. And then you could just be like, he tripping. <laughs> whole energy. <laughs> um, but my, my, um, my, my thought on the, the whole energy is you just need a hug too. Mm. Right? Yeah. And, and 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 you 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 are you're trying to attach yourself for the self-worth of it, but it's like here's what I tell all of my mentees. If the Holy Spirit can use me to draw people to Jesus, then I can use me to draw people to my hotel room. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's the same. Like, if he can use me to do that, then I can use me to do that. Mm-hmm. That's a decision. Mm. Yeah. 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 And it's also, you know, I will say that one of the cons of one of the fallouts of the purity culture movement is this notion that, like, all women are after you. It's the most delusional thing in the yeah, world. It's this weird, like subtle, like it, it, bro. They're just all after. It's like no, they're bro. not, bro. They're, that's, that's your sister in Christ, like that, chill. That women aren't walking around. They're not. <laughs> they're really not. And that's the delusion of like they all up in my DMs. Like yeah. like women are trying to survive in their own bodies. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a couple of loose ones out here, yep. but like you, they would have to be hella brave to step to me. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like I've been hit on by dudes. That's weird. I haven't been hit on by no girls. Interesting. Because the 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 girls are like, I think this nigga really loves his wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, my pastor does this thing. And a family member came to church, and she was kind of off put by it. But my pastor does this thing where every Sunday, him and his wife do announcements together, and before he preaches, she gives him a, a kiss on the mouth. Mm-hmm. And I and a family member came and was kind of like, "Yeah, I don't know about that PDA, you know, in off on the pulpit." And I'm like, "No, no, 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 no. That's healthy. Yeah, like that's good. Yeah, for sure. That's healthy and good. You're just yeah. not used to seeing a healthy e- marriage. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. You're confused. Yeah. On that. That's what." Couples do, yeah, for sure, absolutely. You know? That really love each other, yeah, yeah. Like I, yeah, I don't, I don't, um, I, I, yeah, I, I just feel like we, I'm, the normalization of this type of conversation mm-hmm. is how I think we help people identify and spot people mm. that are thirsty and thirst trapping mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. trying to use the pulpit mm-hmm. to like, like this, this girl, um. Uh, uh, on our last live, my sister, bro, she she was just like, um, I was dating this guy at the church. He's the lead pastor, but he's not married. And we wind up, you know, having sex. And I just find out he's talking to another girl. Mm. How do I? I was like, do I have permission? Are you opposed to me speaking to you like a, a, a brother would speak to a sister? Mm-hmm. And she was like, you got it go and i was like you played yourself Mm. you played yourself and then she was like well he said that god told me that i would be his wife Mm. and i was like yeah that this is this is this is church game yuck this is church game and 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 we the my sisters our sisters want a man of god so bad Mm -hmm. that when they said god said Mm -hmm. they want to believe it Mm. right and then they get lavish with Love and or lust, mm-hmm. whatever their body responds to it, and mm-hmm. you kind of already broken down the mind, and you know, mm-hmm. then then the body opens up, and then okay, you did something, and the truth of the matter is, 
you let your guard down because you you wanted something so bad you didn't want to go in the proper order. Mm. So you played hopscotch with a process that's supposed to be yeah. pretty yep. structured. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you crescendoed before he said I do. Mm. And now he said I don't. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's brutal. That's brutal. You know, I, I had a conversation, and I want to I see what you think about this. This conversation got me in trouble. I'm not sure if you caught wind of any of this. I, I, I was on your cousin's, Lecrae's okay. pod. Yep. Beautiful conversation, great conversation. Yeah, he's a great, he's a great potter. And we, uh, the, this conversation of women and marriage and dynamics came up, patriarchy, so on and so forth. And you talked about young women wanting that that marriage, mm -hmm. right? And I made a point, mm -hmm. and it got me in trouble with some of his audience. Okay, a lot of women didn't like this. Okay, but. This is what I said. You, so you, you didn't catch wind of any of this? No, okay, no, no, good, no. Good. So we had a conversation. We are talking about patriarchy. And I said this. I said, patriarchy, in and of itself, the first definition that comes up, is not a bad thing. Because mm -hmm. patriarchy just means the man is the head of the, the household. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the clinical definition. Then the second definition is like a system of power structure where women mm -hmm. are, right? Mm -hmm. But the first definition is like the man is the, the, the patriarch mm -hmm. of the family mm -hmm. is the man. Not mm -hmm. the matriarch, but the patriarch. Mm -hmm. So that already got me in trouble. Mm -hmm. Then we talked because he clipped that in the intro. Which, by the way, shout out to your to the team and Lecrae, everybody. <laughs> Y'all killed that intro, right? But then we got into um, women and how a lot of what's being pushed on women is that hey, you need to be independent, you need to be educated, mm -hmm. you need to have a career. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, you also want to be married and be a mom. And have a bad body, right? And all these different things, yeah. Right? It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure, and I I pointed to real data, and I went and researched more data on this. Mm -hmm. So here's the, here's what the data shows. Mm -hmm. Forbes Woman did a study, and they found out that eighty six percent, according to Forbes Woman, mm -hmm. of working women want a season of life where they can stay home and be moms. Mm -hmm. They want to be stay at home moms. Eighty six percent of working women mm -hmm. want that. One third of those women will go to have a disdain and a frustration with their husband if he doesn't provide that for them. They mm -hmm. will they, 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 they will grow frustrated with them. Mm -hmm. This is according to Forbes women. Mm -hmm. So eighty six percent of this, of women of working women. This sounds like according to ninety two percent of the women that are in my life that I talk to. Right. Yep. And so that's what Forbes women is saying. This isn't. Christian women, this is right. conservative women, this is mm -mm. trad cons, this is right. women, working exactly. women. Yep. There's a, a study, two other studies, one was 64%, one was 56%, found the same thing. Working women with kids 18 and under would have preferred to stay home and be moms mm -hmm. had they been given the opportunity to. Mm -hmm. and, if they, and if they don't, they'll oftentimes grow resentful of their husband. So my, my, th my conversation was like, hey, uh, here's what the data shows. Mm -hmm. There's a thing called biology mm -hmm. that like once you have a baby, it changes something in you. Yep. And respectfully, I'm not trying to speak to women. Right. Like that, I don't need to do that. Like Lisa Bevere does a great job of right, that. Right, absolutely. I don't need to have that. Yeah. I'm trying to equip the men. Correct. To say, hey. Yeah. These women out here. Yeah, absolutely. They don't want you, they don't want you working at FedEx yes. 17 hours a day. Yeah. They forever. Don't, they don't really want to be the breadwinner dog. Yeah, yeah they don't. <laughs> they want you to figure it out. Yeah. And so in light of the economy and inflation and all mm -hmm. these things, um, this is something we should be prepared for and, and, and equip young men for, specifically 18 to 25. Right. My nephew works with me. He's 19. Mm -hmm. We're trying to drill this into him. Yeah. That Listen, at some point, bro, you're going to get married and your wife is going to want to stay home when you have kids. Right. Start making better decisions because the future version of you is depending on the present version of Facts. you to make good decisions. Facts. Somehow, according to a segment of Lecrae's audience, this was chopped into misogyny oh and because they only, they only heard patriarchy yeah that's all they heard yeah yeah and toxic masculinity well well listen um the let me get in trouble with you <laughs> um and tell me when you got to go because we could I just don't. keep going <laughs> i like, don't i push my I thing don't. to tomorrow okay great 
So we so, always go long, by yeah, the way. We, I think last time we did like four or five hours. Too. Yeah. So <laughs> so here's my thing, bro. There there are things that God has designed for people in a male body mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. that he has not designed for a female body mm -hmm. to do just biologically biologically he's designed yeah. that to be different mm -hmm. right in its execution it's not to say that one or the other or both cannot don't have the capacity yeah. or there's to, or there's not exceptions to the rule or there's not exceptions to the rule yeah. that is the part that they miss mm. They will take the exception to the rule and try to convince themselves and others that it's the rule. Mm -hmm. It's not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it never has been. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So while this is going to, this, oh, somebody's going to be triggered. Trigger alert. I have a friend of mine who is one of the most certified pilots in the whole country, if not the world. Mm -hmm. uh, she owns, I think, four airplanes, and she can fly anything. She's unbelievable. There are not... A million women trying to break into aviation. Mm -hmm. And there never will be. Oof. You definitely get in trouble for this, Tim. <laughs> Are there going to be a million? Is that the aspiration of a million women? I don't think so. To be pilots? Yeah, I don't think so. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is yeah. it is it the aspiration of a million women to be peace officers? Mm -hmm. Is there is it the aspiration of a million women to lay railroad tracks? Mm -hmm. To climb up telephone poles? Like you know what I'm saying? Sure. To work on oil rigs in the middle of off the Gulf of Mexico? Mm -hmm. Like, is there? Mm -hmm. Like if that's the case. I want to be an advocate. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> if a million of my sisters are trying to get into those industries, <laughs> let my sisters in. Right? I will be the male voice yeah. that's like, why y'all not letting my sisters in, nigga? <laughs> like, I'll go straight hood like, hey, dog, how come y'all didn't take her application, nigga? Yeah, yeah. How come you only taking Frank's application? Yeah. Michelle out here, nigga. <laughs> she went on that rig, dog. But there's not a million there's of them. There's not a million of them. No. Right? Yeah. So let's celebrate Oprah and Beyonce and uh Ivy mm -hmm. uh for for um for doing these incredible things and 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 uh sent I forgot since last name, but she's she is over uh Dallas uh Mavericks. Mm -hmm. She's like Cynthia the Marshall. Sent Marshall. Mm -hmm. Cynthia Marshall, right? Sent like we, we women I, I I everybody knows I'm an advocate for women. Mm -hmm. And there are things that God has designed and given authority to men to do mm -hmm. that He's not given authority to women mm -hmm. for women to do. Mm -hmm. And it's biological and it's spiritual. Mm. And there's even two ex exceptions to that. Mm -hmm. You can look in scripture mm -hmm. and see that there are exceptions mm -hmm. to that. Yep. But it wasn't like the daughters of Zelophehad mm -hmm. was 800,000 women mm -hmm. trying to find their right to have land yeah. in Israel. Mm -hmm. It was a mitigating circumstance that had to be addressed with, and God was like, bro, don't, don't even think about this. Let them get the land, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we could look Old Testament, New Testament. There's enough there. If there was a million women trying to be pastors, mm -hmm. I would be like, what, what's the problem? Mm -hmm. We gotta don't we have to disciple these people? Is this gonna be an issue for everybody? 
But there ain't a million women trying to lead churches. Mm -hmm. There's a few. And maybe in those instances, this is exactly what's needed. Here's my here here's where where my mind always goes, especially with what I just told you. Some of these niggas is too many. There's too many male hoes. Mm -hmm. He's like, just get a woman in here, ain't, ain't or, or if it's a you know, I, I'm personally not for a woman being a lead pastor. But if it's in North Korea and there's no churches, if it's in China and there's an underground church and all that's there is a woman, if it's Baltimore <laughs> and all the dudes are hoes, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. God will make exceptions. Here's the here's the most insulting I'm part like, to me about this, and I and I I started seeing other women put push back on some of the, this 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 is that the notion that a stay at home mom doesn't do anything crazy. Like that's the most insulting. Th they've part already about it they've all. already put a valuation that it, it, the job alone would be in the six figures, yes. high mid to high six yes. figures. That's everything a stay at home mom has to do to say that that's not work. Oh, you don't want, you just uh, But it's triggering in a culture where Andrew Tate has done his red pill. Sure. Dissertation. Sure. And then the pink, is it pink pill for the girls? Mm -hmm. I I'm think just, so. Yeah. Right? Like, or the blue, I don't know what it is. But then, like, then the girls are, are low-key feminists, mm -hmm. and we don't need a guy for anything mm -hmm. until we need a guy. Until we need a guy. For so something. So we need to build the roads and work on the oil rigs. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or yeah. whatever. So I, I, just think, I just think we, it's why conversations are important and sound bites suck. Oh, yeah. And um, we're, we're doing a better, I think we, we are doing a better job where we are, we're just starting to say, even with, with with our content, let's just put out the stuff that helps. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Because it, well, the thing is, when the like, conversations don't happen, yeah, then Andrew Tate says something that's common sense, right? And because of all the weird stuff he backdoors and yeah. he represents, yeah, then all of a sudden that get categorized. But don't let the weird stuff cause you to have a traumatic reaction yeah. to the stuff he's saying that's common sense. For example, uh, I saw a clip, this lady and her really big son mm -hmm. knock on the door of this house. This guy answers the door. Mm -hmm. And she's like, did you put your hand on my son? Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah. I caught him in my house mm -hmm. in the bed with my daughter. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't punch him. Mm -hmm. I roughed him up a bit. Mm -hmm. I yanked him up off my daughter. He knew the rules of my house. They supposed to stay in the living room. Mm -hmm. I had to. I had to. I had to let him know. Mm -hmm. You don't put your hands on my son. This is a single mom. Mm. Defending her mm -hmm. 17, 16, 17 year old son. This is this an actual viral video. You this, saw? This, yeah. This, yeah, I'll send it to you. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there looking at it, and I'm like. I think this this young man respects dude more than he respects his mom. Mm. Cause he knew what he did was wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any dad is gonna do this. Yeah. My dad roughed up my my brother, Miles, for being my he was dating a girl and and the mom, her mom caught them. And called home, my dad went nuclear on my... On, <laughs> that's what a daddy's supposed right. to do, bro. That's you're supposed right. to respect women. What is you doing? Yep. We're not letting this happen, right? Yep. So, especially you have zero chill. You're doing it in the parents' house. Like, mm -hmm. this is crazy. So, it's out of bounds. But she looks so crazy. Mm. Like, instead of coming over and being like, hey, I don't like the fact that you roughed up my boy, but good looking out. Mm -hmm. I respect you. She's over there trying to advocate for her son, and this is why her son is gonna stay soft mm. or gonna despise women mm. because this mama would not boundary herself and respect the role of this man mm -hmm. protecting his daughter. Yeah. And her son. Yep. Yep. This is what the son hasn't been getting. From the mama. Mm. And can't ever get mm -hmm. from the mama. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. You don't get to have Mother's Day and Father's Day. Mm -hmm. It's Mother's Day for a reason. Mm -hmm. Right? 
Unless you just want dinner and socks. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think you're being a little greedy if you want both. But damn. Like, you know what I'm saying? You get dinner. We get socks. nigga. We get ties. You know what I mean? We get nothing. Right? (laughs) Right? Like, so, but... It's a, it's, it, I'm not over here in like this victim, like it's a thankless job to be a man and there's so much, pre- like, like we were built for this. Mm-hmm. And I don't want my wife taking that off of my shoulders. Mm-hmm. I was built, I, 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 I am, my wife can, can, can rest under me because I'm resting under Christ. Mm-hmm. That's good. We all got headship around here. Mm-hmm. I'm not telling her that I'm her head at the expense of me being submitted to yep. somebody. Yep. It's God and Jesus and me and her and the kids. Yep. That ain't no that ain't no power structure. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. just so, the line. So so let me ask you this though. So then do you think that there are people because they're they struggle with that. They're mm-hmm. they're gonna they're gonna come after you for that. They're gonna say, see, he's he's a he's 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 bad. He's a toxic masculinity, whatever, fill in blank. Do you think that some of the reason why some men stay single and women stay single is because they don't they can't grasp that and submit to that model meaning that for men hey man you got to figure this out you're gonna have to figure out how to how to one get through your issues so that you could be capable and competent to lead care yep. for and provide for a family yeah you need to start preparing for that and then women hey you need to get through your issues so that you can submit under a man and yeah. understand that what's going to drive him is feeling respected and yeah. honored by you. Yeah. Right. Now that doesn't mean women don't need respect and men right. don't. For need sure. That. No, I'm not saying that. that yeah. But but generally speaking. Yeah. And so we're dealing with an epidemic of young people that are that are. I'm here and like I just can't find somebody. I just can't find somebody. And then it's like well then you peel away at the layers and it's like well, you don't want to provide and figure that aspect out and you don't want to submit. Yeah, I, I think I think. Th- uh, what, I'm, what I'm not saying is that single women should submit to random single men. That's no, not, no, I'm not advocating no, 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 for that. No, 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 but what I'm either. saying is the the what's going to attract the type of person you want to be with. What yeah. are the character attributes, the disciplines, yeah. the way you carry yourself that's going to attract a person that you can build a life with? Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I, this would be an arbitrary number, but in my in my lifetime, it feels right. I I 85 percent of women, point blank, period have no problem resting under a strong man. Okay. You think it's that high? I do. Okay. I think 15% are crazy. <laughs> and, so it, maybe- and, and it doesn't matter how strong and secure and yeah. emotionally healthy it is. Yeah. The girl just, she's used to her argument yeah. and she wants her man to be desired by other women so yeah. she can have somebody to scream at and she can be like, have you been with your hoes? Have you been out with them other bees? Maybe like, it's the 15% that's just the loudest. Like the 15% they, they are that, the have been, that have been polluted by feminism and completely... Well, just like the pastors that fall. Yeah, 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 it's good. Hell, that's only, that's blessed than... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's like 10%. What, if that what, what percentage of men do you think that are like, man, I'm gonna I'm willing to take charge and to answer the call to figure out how to be a provider to 40%. Out, 40%. It's low. It's low. Okay. It's low. Why do you think that is? Because um these guys desperately want a father, but they don't want to be sunned. Oof. Okay. It's Kyrie Irving. Mm. And and in in the year after they won the chip and mm-hmm. he gets traded to Boston. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, nah, mm. I'm going to be my own person. Mm. Then he goes to Boston and he bounces to Brooklyn and he winds up uh, where it was Boston, Brooklyn. I feel like he was one other place before he got with the Mavs. But I can't think of where he was. Anyway, then he goes, I should have just stayed with LeBron. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. But 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 no, I the, re- the reason why I put it low, Ruslan, is because these dudes, they're like, I wanna I wanna be mentored, but but they ain't heard this voice. Mm. They haven't heard this voice. Right? So they want it, but when they get it, they like, I can't. Mm. Well, you never had it. Mm. And you won't adjust to it. Mm-hmm. And you think, so now you think you're being punked because mm. you've been watching power <laughs> for the last five years. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You've been watching Boardwalk yeah. and The Wire. Yeah. So you like, this ni- nigga ain't gonna sun me. Yeah, yeah, nigga, yeah. I ain't no punk. I ain't- yeah. Bro, that, you don't know how to act, bro. Yeah. 
Yeah. You never had a dad check you. Mm. Even if a dad is being like super polite, there's something about a man's voice mm -hmm. that when I direct something at you, hey, bro, you can't do that no more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like my ego got to die. Mm -hmm. My pride got to die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. That's a, that's the thing. No, that, that's, that's good. And, so, so is it fair to say when the men get discipled, absolutely. get shepherded, absolutely. or loved, absolutely. and and become or, or are becoming because mm -hmm. I don't want because I wasn't you know what I mean I wasn't yeah. me 20 years ago when yeah, I started for sure At, but I was either. I was becoming well I can't I I, I actually got to say yeah because that dude yeah because you, you you had your dad you're like <laughs> I had my dad yeah I, my pops you yeah. know we reconciled when I was an adult my right. dad wasn't in my life so I was right. still figuring it yes, out sir. I had Jesus yes sir a couple yeah. mentors yeah but I was figuring it out so it's like if a man is figuring this out and is developing would you say that it's that the women will follow. Oh, absolutely correct. Mm. Absolutely correct. Because because um, uh, a discerning woman, not only does she see the potential in a man, a discerning woman will also know when that man is putting the effort in. Mm -hmm. And at that point, she can trust God and have faith in him that, mm -hmm. oh, I'm not going to have the same. When I got married to Juliet, I didn't have a job or a car. Mm -hmm. When I got married to her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, when I, I guess when we started dating, when we got married, I didn't have a job for nine months. Mm. So from the outside looking in, it was like, who did you get with? Mm. Right. We got married in 99. By 04, I retired her from her job. She's never worked for anybody except for her. She's opened multiple businesses, been an entrepreneur for the last 20 years. 04 is when I retired her. It's 2024. Mm -hmm. She's only worked for herself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's she, funny. My wife is it's 2014 when we had Levi. Right. She hasn't worked. Yeah. So 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 there is there there is this. She knew. Oh, this this dude's gonna figure it out. Mm -hmm. He he might not have nothing now, but he gonna figure it mm -hmm. out. And I figured it out. Mm -hmm. And this is what we've been able to matriculate to as a result. Mm -hmm. This house is paid off. Mm -hmm. We, I I'm probably 11 months from zero debt mm -hmm. right because of the way i aggressively knock stuff down and that includes car notes and everything mm -hmm. like there is a I, my my wife can pay bills mm -hmm. she hasn't she don't she in a she can tap a button and figure out where everything is mm -hmm. she 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 can turn that part of her brain off mm -hmm. Now, if that's just something she loved doing, mm -hmm. and if she was like, if she excelled in that area, and I was just kind of like, oh, numbers just hurt. Please take my check. Mm -hmm. Then I would give it to her. Mm -hmm. But like, there's a certain stress level that I never want my wife to experience. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Now, what would you say to the man? Because 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 I know these brothers personally that would say, yeah, man, like good good for you, but you got married in '99. You know what I mean? That's that's yeah. that's good for you, but times of times are hard. Or Ruslan, that's good, man. But you got married in two thousand eight. Yeah, it's different now. It's hard out here. The economy is different. It's harder to find a a, a livable job. I mean, a, a livable wage. Oh, absolutely. All that sort of stuff. Yeah, but that doesn't change the the way that you're uh, constituted. Mm -hmm. That doesn't change the way that you should be wired. Mm -hmm. That that shouldn't change the way you should work on the formation of yourself. Okay, mm -hmm. so maybe you're not going to be in a situation where you're going to make six figures and be able to retire your your wife in five years is there a plan to take a vacation mm -hmm. out of the country mm -hmm. and not just to a different state mm -hmm. like like what kind of intention that do 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 you have a plan to be debt free mm -hmm. so that four grand takes care of all your Essential expenses, expenses, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And De then decrease your burn rate, De decrease your burn rate, and then you got enough discretionary income mm -hmm. that her hair can get done mm -hmm. every week if she wanted to, mm -hmm. right? Not if it's coloring because mm -hmm. I'd burn it out. I, I know that much, mm -hmm. um, but that's what I'm like. I can like we we I can't promise you a million dollars in the bank. I can promise you a mindset mm -hmm. that can literally help your wife relax. That's good. That when she comes home. She ain't got to come home worried about now I got to be mom and chef mm -hmm. and sexually active and, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And part-time uh, uh, school to get finish my degree. When, when Okay, boom, you come home. All right, babe, I got the kids. I'm going to bathe them. Mm -hmm. Everybody's down by 745. 
we have our quality time from seven, I mean, from eight until 10. And then I'm up at six. I'm in my word. Like, mm -hmm. like the stuff that the, most of these dudes call hard is just discipline. Mm -hmm. That's good. What they call it like, you don't know what it's like to be a man. Well, yeah. Mm. You're in a different body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you were built for more. Mm -hmm. You were built to carry a different stress level. You were, di you were built to carry a different load. You could complain about it. Or you can say, oh, this is my responsibility. Mm -hmm. And it's a responsibility I welcome. And I need to exercise myself That's now. Cool. You could, you could complain about it. Or you can rise to the occasion. You got to rise. Well, well, you can't rise. You got to be built. Yeah, that's good. Right? Like, like there's no rising to the occasion. Like, you fall to the level of your integrity. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. A paper airplane will not be found at 30,000 feet in the air. Mm. Just won't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, a Boeing will. Mm -hmm. But a Boeing also won't be found in space. Mm -hmm. It's not getting through the Earth's atmosphere. It's going to melt. It's going to burn up. It's going to explode. Yeah. So you don't rise to the occasion. You fall to the level of your integrity. And what I'm trying to tell men is that all this deconstruction we're trying to do to believers, we need to deconstruct ourselves. Mm. Some of us was built from some flimsy materials. Yeah, come on. A lot of us, the foundation of our uh, of our essence is built on excuses. Mm. It's built on a victim mentality. Mm -hmm. It's built on a... Uh, a negative self narrative mm -hmm. that has kept you in a loop. Mm -hmm. Deconstruct that. Yeah, why good. you at it? That's good. Since you deconstruct in the church, yep. deconstruct your femininity, mm. right? Deconstruct your mas masculinity and see if it lines up with the word, mm -hmm. right? The, forget everything you heard and what all these people doing. I heard uh, there. There, I, I think Lexi said something. I think it was Lexi. She said, "I want the mind of Christ and I want the body of a stripper." Okay. <laughs> okay. Like, okay, that's an aspiration. If if that's what you want, mm -hmm. right? But what if you didn't have the stripper to compare yourself to? Mm. Like if you could just unplug and you didn't have you didn't have the sensory overload of like this nigga has a McLaren. Mm. How? Well, he's a drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> They're playing by different rules. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> he's a drug dealer. Yeah. yeah. He has a garage with 15 of the same cars in it yeah, for yeah. different years. Yeah. Illegal activity got yes. him that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's a, there's a point that that, that uh, I forgot who said this, but he said, "Don't take advice. Don't fight, don't take financial or business advice from someone that went from zero to one." Right. Illegally. Yeah. Take financial yeah, advice from someone bro. that went from zero to one legally. Right. It doesn't matter if they went from one to ten right. legally. That initial zero to the first M, if yeah. that's illegal, yeah. they're not they're not gonna know what it's like to tell a blue collar guy who's trying to figure out how to go from zero to one legally. That's right. That's, that's right. That's, that's not right. the person you want to you yeah. know, so like when Jay Z is giving business advice, yeah, if you're already up M's and you want to go to billions, yeah, maybe. Yeah. But Jay Z got his start completely Exa illegally, yeah, unethically bro. selling a, poison to his own community. Th that's absolutely Absolutely correct. Not the person. So when somebody, know? so so even with that, when somebody said like the little what ifs, right? Would you take five million dollars or a dinner with Jay Z, mm -hmm. right? I'm taking the five I'm mil. Taking the five mil. Because what yeah. Jay, J, the advice Jay Z is going to give me, yeah, is from his perspective. I'd rather get the five mil and then go hire yeah. an investment guy. That's right. To tell me what to do with this yeah. now. That's right. Because I'm not going to be... J I don't got yeah. no albums to put on top of right. it. Right, right, right. I just need to know how to steward this five mil. That's right. And double that. That's right. I don't get to go back and put a Tadal portfolio on it and Beyonce's money on it and yeah, 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 yeah. art paintings on it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, I would, I would, if, we, if we take the metaphor a step further, don't take fitness advice from someone that didn't get their body naturally. Right? So if you... If you I want the mind of Christ in the body of a stripper, but that body of a stripper hypothetically has a BBL. Correct. Has a boob job. That's correct. Got liposuction. That's absolutely correct. You know what I mean? Or lip injections. Yeah, lip injections. Yep. Or the, the 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 fellas. Right. You taking advice from someone that's clearly on some gear. Right. Absolutely. And they want to tell you about macronutrients. Right. <laughs> Their body absorbs nutrients different than yours, dog. <laughs> they're they're injecting themselves. 
with androgynous testosterone <laughs> and other stuff <laughs> that gives them different nutrient consumptions. They have liquid cadaver yeah, on the inside. Not of the them. guy that yeah. you want to be taking nutritional or fitness <laughs> advice from. They're 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 literally right. And they're so coming from two different places. Yeah, you take yeah. in which we're taking in this information from people that like, you know, that that influencer guy is not living amongst the, the the normies no he's not trying to get under 20 percent body fat no he's not <laughs> he's, he's not injecting himself with other stuff that's right and that's not to say that you know some people that are older that may need trt for actual low testosterone and there's right. not a time and a place for that that's different yeah you know absolutely. we're talking advice from 30 year olds on testosterone yeah, absolutely and like yeah i'm gonna do what he said it's like nah yeah 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 you know no i i pre i appreciate you saying that because i like right now um I feel like it just feels like the algorithm just brings me uh, apologetics debates, mm. you know, mm -hmm. like and and Cliff mm -hmm. and all the people like, you know, this person owned a Muslim mm -hmm. and the Muslim Muslim owned a Christian and wait for this response and that response. And it's like then other people are like, yeah, I'm going to get all these clips and I'm going to be an apologist. And I'm like, how about you just read the Bible? Yeah. yeah. How about you just... Yeah. How about you just read it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and and separating that there's a difference between one, there's a difference between apologetics, worldview apologetics. Two, there's a difference between apologetics applying them to your life. Three, there's a difference between apologetics and debating. Right. That's a different skill set. Yeah. You could actually have good apologetics for why you hold a biblical worldview and why you believe in the resurrection of Jesus. And get toasted in a debate. And get toasted in a debate toasted. because there are people that all they do is debate. debate. Absolutely. That's a different skill set. Yeah. I don't I I suck at debates. Yeah, because I listen too much. <laughs> so I'd be like, "Tell me more." Yeah, yeah. You, and they, and they'd be like, curious. and they'd be like, "Uh," yeah. and I'd be like, "Explain that." Uh. <laughs> why? Why did you do that just now? What? Did, what, what was it about yeah. what you just said that you yeah. love so much? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't do it, bro. I can't do it. Um, I gotta go to bed. Yeah, it's late. It's night there. It's literally past your bedtime. It's past my bedtime. I get up at five or six and Oof. respect Spanish and then Bible and then Spanish Bible and yeah. Well, thank you for having me, brother. This was great. Todos cosas. This was fun, dude. I love you. I love you too, man. Yeah, man. Like it's always this good is conversations. Like, I could talk to you all day, man. Yeah, we're on over three hours. So, are we over three hours for real? Three, yeah. What are we at? Two, two fifty-four right now. Two fifty-four. So if we went six more minutes to just make it a three-hour pod, <laughs> we would be consistent with our. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, you know. I'm. I, I'm not fixated on it. Like we don't have to get to three. But I mean. Oh, Ruslan, uh, thank you, so, bro. These devotionals, like, thank yeah. You. Let me know what you think about those, man. Yeah, I, I will. Think, you I already think. know I will. Yeah, you you you, um, you gave us really good feedback on the first one. We actually implemented your feedback on that one. Really? Yeah, because you gave me the memory verse and you know how often should you do a memory verse? Right. And so we actually implemented that. Yeah. In, in from your feedback, so yep. thank you for that. Yeah, um, that's dope. And the instructions, yeah. And then yeah, though the the devotional, I'm super excited about just to get to, just you know, I'm really trying to think of like what do I wish I had. 22 years ago when I was coming to the faith. Facts. I wish I would have had someone that walked me through the Bible in 60 days. Yep. And it was interactive and I got to write it out. Right? See, that's how I feel about the way I talk too. Mm -hmm. I wish yeah. 20 something years ago somebody had been like, hey nigga, yeah. you ain't got to do that no more. <laughs> I would have been like, what? Yeah. But it was like this code switch, this church code switch mm -hmm. that, because I, I always, I thought about the, I thought about how much I code switched with white people mm -hmm. and and completely didn't recognize how much I code switched with church people. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I, I was doing the same thing. Mm. It was, and I did it at Potter's house and I did it at Gateway. And I did it for I did it for like the first two and a half, three years at Embassy City. Mm. Before I was like, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who am I doing this for? I think here's here's the thing, and, and I'll probably get dragged for this, but I think people have an issue with acknowledging that there are certain people that you have to communicate with differently. And if you don't have those people in your life and you aren't around those people, yeah. that doesn't make sense. True. Right? And so True. it's like, if whether, and I'm not saying this is, a, I'm not even saying it's a racial thing. I'm saying like, if you don't have someone that comes from a life of addiction, of right. gangs. True. And it, there's a certain way that they almost want you to speak to them. Yes. 
And I'm not saying that that's, that's not me advocating for profanity, but no, that is saying no. that sometimes you just got to be aggressive and it, blunt. Exactly. And and that is going to be received better than the way I'm going to speak to a young adult. For who, sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, is, for sure. Is, is 21 years old is trying to figure out their life. Yeah, exactly. It's totally different. Yeah, dude, you know? I, I absolutely agree. And that's the, that's all, that's my mindset. Yeah. And like, like I had, a, I have a dear friend of mine, uh, uh, educated man, brilliant theologian, and he was like, man, every he's white, and uh, he has a very diverse church. And he was like, bro, every time you say nigga, I wince. And he didn't. He said the n word. He didn't say nigga, but he was like, every time you say the n word, I wince. Oh my god, why do you have to use it? And then I have um, uh, uh, some people out of church, uh, black parents, their kids listen to you, and they're they're trying to teach your kids not to say nigga, mm -hmm. and or as he said the n word because he didn't say nigga. I'm trying to teach them not to say Nick, not to say the N word. And how do you reconcile that? And I'm like, well, instead of like being like, oh, uh, how come Tim won't stop mm -hmm. on his own couch in his house mm -hmm. talking like that? Mm -hmm. I'm like, have them take notice of when I'm on other people's pods. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I'm. I don't have to do like if I don't have that comfort level or i i'm discerning too i'm an empath and I'm, I'm i'm very attuned to people it might not it might not be the setting for yeah. for for that for that thinking wavelength for that stream of consciousness yeah and tell them to take notice of the fact that they shouldn't be saying it everywhere mm. and if you don't want them saying it in your house you have the right as a parent to tell them it doesn't matter what tim is saying right like i'm not going to help you parent your damn child mm -hmm. You tell them to stop. Yeah. If you don't yeah. want that, my kids can't. My kids say nibba. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that your kids aren't allowed to say. It. Yeah, they can't say it. Interesting. Yeah, Why they, is that? They, they, there's a, there's an age and stage. Okay. I think with everything, there, there is maturity and appropriate. And my, like my, my sixteen year old just got a phone. Uh -huh. Yeah. He didn't have a phone that's until good. like literally like eight days ago. Yeah, that's good. And and so, um. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, y'all don't get to use that word yet. First of all, you didn't come from where I come from. Mm -hmm. Y'all are upper middle class suburban kids. Mm -hmm. So y'all got it from music. Mm -hmm. I got it from culture for real, for real. So I don't want y'all using it. And in my presence, now, we caught them slipping, mm -hmm. saying it a couple of times. They didn't even know we heard. We were like, hey, bro, in my house, you already know this is not how I want you to talk. Mm -hmm. Some people might say, well, it's do as I say, not as I do. No, there's going to be an age and stage. We can have that conversation, mm -hmm. and that can go both ways. Right now, you don't get to have it at 16. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah. As my, my son is black, half black, whatever you want to call it. And that, that is def black. definitely a, a, a word. <laughs> You're raising well, black kids. <laughs> well, I, I, I've had... Afro-Armenian kids. I've had friends use it around him. Mm -hmm. Black friends use it around him. Mm -hmm. Never referring to him, but definitely around him. And that and it made me extremely uncomfortable. Because mm -hmm. I don't... I don't... Yeah, I don't want... That but 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 my son will be like, Dad, you said stupid. He'll check me on right. like, you <laughs> right? said stupid. That's not nice. Yeah, like, yeah. Stop it. Yeah. So he'll check me about like stupid yeah. or yeah. like that's you know. Noah. That's yeah. Noah to yeah. me. Yeah, he's he's so sweet. But yeah. yeah, if I if I'm taking inventory, I would be like, man, I don't I don't want them using that word. However, um, I have a greater I should have a greater influence over them than social media and if, and if i don't then perhaps they don't need to be on social media that Pr part. perhaps they don't need to listen to tim ross yeah exactly you yeah know? exactly and that's fine and again in this space again one i would never go up to where they live and be like you ain't gonna stop me from saying nigga 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 nigga, nigga. like you know what i'm saying that's just, what are we doing <laughs> i don't know why that was funny but it, yeah that was it was that was stupid yeah. um but 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 like you can unfollow yeah. And you can mute or yeah. you can not listen to an yeah. episode or you yeah. can just yeah. altogether pivot. But, but you that, can, I mean, that's and, a and deal. I think it sounds like you've counted the cost on that word. I sure have. And the other words, it sounds like you're like, yeah, I'm not going down that hill. But nah, yeah. for whatever reason, you have that an affinity for that word. I, I do. And for me as a white dude, I don't care to know why. I yeah. mean, I, I'm, I'm curious, <laughs> but I, I get it. But I don't care yeah, to yeah. even discuss it. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. like, yeah, it's it's. It's my twang. Yeah. It's just West Coast. Yeah. It's just yeah. the cadence, I, th I think bro. that's a good conversation for folks in the black community. Though. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, for sure. In terms of my house, I'd be like, nah, I don't want you saying that. Yeah, I don't for want sure. that said. Yeah. But, and it wouldn't be said. Yeah. Like, and it wouldn't even be like, you're not letting me be me. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. I just told you how much I code switch for the church and yeah. this, that, and the other. Again, my 
the, it, I think the biggest part for me is I'm in my own house. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's and listen, man, that's 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 hard to be to be sympathetic to people. That is hard to receive because while you're in your own house, it is very you are discipling people at scale. Yeah, We're, we all are. Yeah, you know, I said this to Preston, and I said, "Yo, like, you guys do something in your living room." Do you understand the psychology of someone being in your living they're in your living room or 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 creators that create in their bedroom? Like that is such an intimate space when someone's is. in your space. Yeah. So there's that parasocial relationship. Yeah. And they they're not they they understand they're with you in your house. Yeah. But at the same time, they don't know you. Right. But they feel like they do. That's right. And it's you don't Cosby know show. them. And it's it's hard. It's Cosby it's show. It's hard to sift through all that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But my my so so I've thought about that yeah. and, and the psychology behind that. One of the reasons why it was important for us to be in the house is because um, I, I was literally thinking about, I can close my eyes and give you the Cosby Show living room. Mm -hmm. I, I can give you the the um, table, mm -hmm. the couch, the chairs bookending. Behind that, there's, there's another table with the phone on it. Mm -hmm. um, this way, up two steps is the door of the brownstone inside. If you go all the way to cross, then you'll go into the kitchen. If you go two steps up, up the stairs, you'll get to all the bedrooms. If you go behind that staircase, you'll go into the dining room, make a left. If you make a right, you're going down to Dr. Huxtable's office yeah. where he did his stuff. So, um, uh, cause he was the, um, gynecologist or, or the, uh, baby doctor whatever he was doing right okay that's like that's iconic right and and so you you saw this living room and how people played out and vanessa sneaking out and theo smelling like weed one time and you know is uh the cousin maxine on living single i forgot what her name was on but then like is she gonna have sex with her boyfriend and like being coerced and all, like and all played it out there right for me, I feel like my assignment is to just show you an integrated person. Mm. Flaws and all. Mm -hmm. If if we want to call it a flaw or I, I'm not like, I want to show you how weak I am. It's just, this is just the way I am. Mm -hmm. And there's no duplicity. Once again, I'd rather, if, I'd rather you know this is the way I talk mm -hmm. than to find out at a cheesecake factory, mm. somebody was like, mm. I caught Tim talking like this. Now, that would be creepy. Mm -hmm. But I like I, I'm not gonna have the Kirk Franken moment where it was like, I thought he was just <laughs> always writing gospel songs. Yeah, cussing out song. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, like it's like, okay. And then if you look at so so that's my thing, is like, yeah. yes, you're in my house, but I'm a human being. Sure. And what? Why are people so like downtrodden when a pastor falls? Because what they showed you was perfection. Mm. What they showed you was like a curated version, of a themselves. curated yeah. version yeah, of yeah. themselves, which is appropriate in this public setting mm -hmm. when you're speaking this message. Mm -hmm. But if that's all you get, of course you're devastated when you see them fall. Yep. I'd rather you just be like, well, at least I know what okay. he's doing. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. And I, and for I, better I, or for worse, yeah. that's just what it is. No, I've I, and I've made it an effort to. I the reason why I stopped. One of the reasons why I stopped cussing outside of I just don't think it's edifying is that I just wanted to be the same around my son and my daughter. Yep. As I was with the boys. Yep. As I am from a pulpit. As yep. I am on my pod. Yeah. I just wanted to be, and it's the same heart. The yeah. same like integration. That's right. Integration. I am the for same me. person. That's right. You know. Absolutely. So you're not gonna find me. Yep. You know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So, okay. I know that took us over three. <laughs> we didn't even try to do that, but. We just kept going. Now, Ruslan and I are the three hour brothers. There we go. <laughs> These guys are the cook, too. They we look are more the, tired than we are. We are the three hour brothers. <laughs> they look more tired than we are. We are done. My bad. We love Jesus. And now we're going to sleep. Uh, that has been Ruslan. I have been Tim Ross. Until next time, dwellers. Peace.